and we are live. What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Uh, I hope everyone is doing really well. I want to apologize in advance. Um, my allergies these last two weeks have been absolutely brutal. And before stream day, or on stream days, I always take an allergy pill to normally help by the time the stream starts. It doesn't seem to be helping a whole lot. So I've got tissue at ready. Uh, I've got a hot key to... Uh, so there will be probably a fair amount of that. I've done what I can and I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Uh, but I'm super excited. It's been, I think, three weeks since we've actually played around with an FDM or FFF or extrusion based printer. Hey, Zombie Hedgehog, what's going on? Thank you for the gifted membership. Uh, Alien, you got the you got the gifted sub or gifted membership. Uh, it's been like three weeks since we've played around with an extrusion based printer. We had a resin, we did the Anycubic D2 unboxing, we did the Phenom uh, Forge build, and then we played around with a laser for this last Monday's stream, which was a ton of fun, uh, a little bit smokier than I would have liked. It's now in its towards its permanent resting home, but this is going to be awesome uh, for anybody that does not know. Let me see who's in chat first, I guess, here. Hey, Kevin, the man, the myth, the legend is here. Uh, Lisa, Zombie, Guffy, Kenneth, Alien, uh, Chris, Luke, 3DP UK, Zen, Skydown. Hope everybody is having an awesome, awesome week so far. So a little bit of background on what this is for anybody that either doesn't know or uh, is going to be watching this later on. Let me pop out chat really quick here. So Kevin, AKA Sam, who is in, hey, what's up KB? Uh, Donna's Kim, uh, Kevin, AKA Sam, who is in the chat right now is the creator author of a pretty awesome mod. Uh, let me share my screen here. Uh, so this is his website, which just launched, I believe, Hey, a pyro design. What's up, Travis? Um, uh, uh, launched officially today, I believe, um, based off of his announcement. And so this is a mod that was created for uh, Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, uh, Ender 3 V2, which is what we're going to be doing today. And it replaces the lead screw. So there's a few different variants of this. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, two euros, uh, Layden. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, hey, Steve's here. Steve is early. What's up, Kim? Uh, so backtracking. Yeah, so this replaces the lead screw. And there's a few different variants of this mod, which we'll get into in just a moment here. But it replaces the lead screw with a belt driven uh, Z or Z axis. And there's a few variants. One of them, which is what we're doing, has a singular stepper motor in the center and the left and right side are basically tied together with these pulleys on a smooth rod. There's also a version where there are uh, two Z axis motors, which is really cool if you want to do things like tramming the gantry. And there is another variant where you replace the roller wheels with linear rails, which we are not doing today. We're going to do the single motor um, and we're going to stick with the V rollers. And the goal is, uh, let's see if I go, we got side cam. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. So let me turn this for you guys. So as of right now, this is a little bit tall. I think I had it set up for the laser at the other stream. Uh, so as of right now, this is an Ender 3 V2 that is stock with the exception of the Micro Swiss uh, NG Extruder Direct Drive. And this, although it's not the world's heaviest direct drive, is definitely heavier than say like a Bowden type setup. And the Ender 3 V2 being supported only on one side by a lead screw, uh, having it supported on both sides with belts should definitely help eliminate uh, most or any sag from the uh, X carriage or the X gantry and also it should help with us being able to do hopefully quicker Z hops um, also with lead screws in general depending on the quality of the lead screw and whether your lead screw is bent or not um, it should also help to eliminate most of all Z artifacts so it's a pretty cool mod um, I'm really excited we're kind of going in blind I haven't watched any or looked at any of the installation stuff on this. Um, the parts, there's quite a few printed parts and these are all printed in Polylite ABS. Um, I don't think ABS is a requirement, but I believe uh, Kevin recommends to at least do PETG just for the, I, I think it's primarily the heat deflection aspect of it. Um, Cause PETG has got some flex. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's due to stiffness. I think it's primarily the heat deflection. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited. This mod was originally brought to my attention from Zerint, who I haven't seen in chat 
yet, but he showed it to me uh, probably a few months ago now, and I thought it looked awesome. And then Zombie Hedgehog, who's in chat, um, uh, don't forget the normal dual Z setups go out of level with their single drivers. Yes. Uh, hey, what's up, Tunky? Um, Zombie was the second person that brought this to my attention again, and I was like, all right, I've really got to get this going. So I ordered the, let me show you guys. Uh, let me put this on the ground for a second. Uh, this V2 does have clipper on it, but it's not, um, it has not been tuned. I just installed clipper on it for this Saturday's upcoming video. Um, so we will have to play around with that as well. Let's go side cam here. Okay, so as far as components, um, again, everything printed out of ABS. It was all printed on the Switchwire. Switchwire has been an absolute workhorse lately. Um, for this particular build, there's a bomb depending on what you're going with, but I ended up ordering this. Um, this is the sort of like bearing belts. I think he calls it the, is it the mechanical kit? Um, but I ordered all this from AliExpress in just one bundle that I, th I think, I don't know how Kevin sort of put together this package through AliExpress, but very handy compared to independently sourcing all the things. Um, and then I originally was just gonna use tons of different bolts and nuts that I had around here, uh, but it was bugging me that they were not either all black or all silver, and they were different types of like cap heads versus button heads versus socket heads. So I ended up ordering all new um, hardware off of AliExpress afterwards as well. So um, I think that I think that sort of summarizes the like initial announcement. Um, I think we'll put all this stuff inward here. Hopefully, I don't have my hardware organizer, so hopefully, um, hopefully we'll be able to do this and keep everything as organized as possible. I think we'll probably go from this angle and I'll use that camera. So um, I explained all versions of pros and cons of the config finder, so it should be easy to find and set up the message you need. Oh, sweet, okay. I really need to get into this mod. One day, it's been a year since I wanna do it. Oh, wow, yeah, I don't know. When did you start this mod, Kevin? It was only brought to my attention um, again a few months ago, but I, I don't know how long ago you started this. Material creep in PLA, okay. Uh, Tunky says, I'm fine in the middle of moving. Oh, uh, but I'm getting a much bigger place. So everything is for a good cause. Awesome. Yeah, I um, I will say that having more space uh, moving here has been absolutely incredible. Uh, there's no way we could have done all of these different projects and stuff like that in the previous place. So, uh, what is it? Zombie said, I did my original mod in Plymouth ABS printed on a nearly stock V2. Wow. Okay, so let's go ahead here and... So I got the website. So basically, um, and I'm sure I will need some pointers along the way again, I'm kind of going into this blind. So we're gonna click on the mod, which is the Belt Driven Ender 3. And we'll just kind of go through it and see what it says. That way, if you were to do this, you can kind of see what the process would look like. And prior to this, Kevin, hey, what's up, G-Funny? Um, prior to this, Kevin, it was, Prime, the instructions were in the GitHub, I would imagine, right? And it just wasn't as like as organized as this where you sort of define exactly your setup. Okay, so intro. I'm not an expert in 3D printing. Uh, it's just my hobby. Kevin says that. He's super humble. I, I see, I've seen his mods. They're amazing, but I, I appreciate the disclaimer. Please be careful uh, and don't just go ahead. All parts are tested and working, but everybody bears the risk. That's fair. Uh, I mean, there's been quite a few times watching videos of stuff I've done on the channel that I know works and then someone says ah my screen is not lighting up anymore or something like that so there's always a risk anytime you mod your printer um so you should definitely know that hey Tony uh why I made this mod my ender always had problems with the z-axis which are caused by a bent and misaligned lead screw therefore I decided to convert the ender belts uh ender to belts in z as well this mod also solves the problem of a hanging x-axis on the right side because of two belts both sides run synchronously and can be adjusted very precisely. Uh, this is a good solution if you have Z problems. Uh, we're here to moderate Kevin. The others are here to moderate me. <laughs> this business is about myself, dual independent Z. What a treat it is to finally get rid of gantry sag. Awesome. Uh, this mod can't solve problems that are caused by inconsistent extrusion, meaning untuned flow rate, extrusion multiplier. Yes, it's not magic. It's fixing the Z axis, but it is not a catch all for any issue. Uh, to get to that, you should tune your extrusions like flow rate and uh, linear advance, yada yada. Take a look at this tuning guide. It works very well. Cool. Uh, build instructions, STL files, and hardware you may need. Um, 
This is an interactive build log that will guide you step by step. I've tried my best to add as many details as possible. And there's a Discord server. Anyone that watches this later on, I did link to the Discord server in the description underneath the uh, GitHub link. And I will also add this link to the description as well since the site is now public. What's up, Thomas? Uh, what is going on, Chris? I believe these steps do need changing for the Z-axis, and I also believe that that is included. I, I know in the GitHub I saw some Clipper macros, I think, towards the end. Uh, let's see. Let's start the build. Click on the picture to start. Let's check really quickly. We won't go through all of this stuff, but um, do I need to change the firmware? No, you don't. This modification works with the stock board and stock firmware. Can I use PLA? Uh, compatible to N3v2, yes, CR, Steerod, I have a specific question. Okay, I think we'll start with that. Troubleshooting we'll go to if we need to, but we'll just go through this as if everything's going to be perfect because that's always the goal <laughs> when we do a mod. Okay, no Z step change, awesome. Uh, let's go here. Okay, so first thing to choose is, it's super cool, like I, I, um, I got to sneak peek this like 24 hours ago just briefly, but I didn't really look through all of it. And this is a very cool way to put together a build guide. Um, definitely a lot of thought has been put into this. It's one thing to make a mod, and it's another to sort of like support the community to make your mod, uh, which is sweet. So it says single or dual. Uh, dual is definitely, in my opinion, a superior solution because you've got tramming and it helps just even more so with keeping things aligned. If anything gets out of whack, you can easily fix it. But I decided to go with single. Initially, it wasn't going on this printer. It was going on a stock Ender 3 with an Ender 3 uh, stock board. And so I didn't want to do board swaps and anything like that. Uh, but you have the option of single or both. And there's some notes here, basically. Uh, differences number of motors. Uh, the single Z version is the correct choice for most printers. Uh, it is for printers that have an original board or upgrade like the SKR Mini E3. And then the dual Z variant is an extension of the just uh, explained variant. It uses two motors, one for the left and right, uh, which allows for tilt Z. So uh, we are going to be going with the single version. Uh, I can attest that Kevin has put untold hours into the documentation. I believe it. I absolutely believe it. I mean, um, for most, most people that know or watch the streams, like I work for Lightburn and do video work for Lightburn. And it's a software, a laser control and design software. And we have a documentation team. Uh, documentation is a ton of work to do well. Uh, so it, it is, this is this is incredible. Okay, so uh, your config single Z and then it says enclosure normal versus ultra low. So if you're going to be enclosing it, it looks like they have a slightly different configuration um, where this is sort of combined into the right side. We're doing, just the normal Z setup. It says, uh, this is if you want to fit it into your Ikea lack enclosure. So we're doing, we're not, I'm not planning on enclosing it. And then as mentioned, there's also the option to stick with the stock V roller wheels or go with rails. I was trying to keep this as cost effective uh, as possible. Uh, yeah, I spent one or two hours on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you have the option if you want to go linear rails. Linear rails are definitely going to be more superior, they're stiffer, they're more precise, you don't have to adjust the eccentric nuts, but um, the the roller wheels work okay and they're, they're again, cost effective. So if you're trying to do this mod and keep costs down, it's certainly uh, an option and that's what we're going to do for this one. And then Bowden or Direct Drive, um, like I said, this has the Micro Swiss Direct Drive NG extruder. So we are going to be going with the Let's see, click on the image to configure with a Bowden, click on the image, so direct drive, this guy. I'm hoping I printed out all the right parts. I believe I did. <laughs> hey, what's up, Dutch? <clears throat> How do we unhumble Kevin? It's okay, I'm here. Somebody told me, I don't remember who it was, that I would make a great hype man. So I'm here to pump Kevin up and, and uh, give him pats on the back for all of his hard work because as someone that's done just a few small mods here and there and has done zero documentation, like it, this is, this is insane. So well, we're all here to give him a round of, a round of applause. What's up, tripods? Hey, Ed. Um, okay, so your config single Z normal plus V roller plus direct drive. And so we need to choose whether we are using the F23 bearings or the, T or the 20 T idlers. I believe, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I went with the F23 bearings. Let me see. Okay, so we've got our uh, 
Idlers. I'm thinking this is it, right? This is these are the F23 bearings. So we went with the bearing route, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, F623. Okay. That seems right. These guys. Let's go side cam. These little guys. So on the AliExpress page, um, I can actually show that as well. Give me one second here to go to it. <clears throat> Make sure I don't show my address. <sighs> hey, what's up? Do it. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Sign in. Okay, I'm pretty sure I just signed in. Why? Uh huh. Okay, AliExpress is like not signing me in. Really bizarre. Oh, here we go. So, I don't know. Uh, um, okay, let me go down to the kit and then I will show you guys. Here it is. Okay, so I went with the F623 version. So, yes, so we were gonna click that. But um, let me show you guys this really quick. So this is really nice as well. You can certainly self-source things based off the bomb. Hey, what's up, Chris? Um, but there is this AliExpress page and this is where I went through and I ordered uh, single Z, so you have single Z, F623, single Z, 20T, dual Z, and uh, F63 and dual Z, 20T. And so I went with single Z, F23, and then I went with, so it looks like black pulleys. Uh, so $34.99, it basically gives you just about all of the things uh, that you're going to be needing other than kind of like your basic bolts. So super, really cool. Um, all the CAD is available, so you need a slight modification. There's options for you to alter it too. Nice. Uh, this is an updated kit, mildly for the original. Yeah, I know that Kevin said this was quite new. Like I think that, I think that he had said was it August 1st that this became available, this latest version, or was it September 1st? I don't actually remember. <clears throat> hey, what's up, hi? I didn't even see you get in there. Okay, so let's go back here to the configuration. So again, we are going with 2.3. It says, in my opinion, there's no better or worse. Something gets wrong to let the belts run with the teeth over smooth idlers. I can understand that too, but in this case, it's not so important. The load is not so strong that you'd notice a difference. In addition, you have to remove the flange from the 20 idler. This is an additional step and the belt is guided. Okay, so we are gonna go with these guys. Okay, so now we've got build materials plus build instructions. It generates basically like a unique serial number, I think. Oh, like a unique, I almost think of it like a serial for your specific build. Um, below you will find a list of all the parts you need to build this mod. The link for the print files will take you to GitHub where you can download all STLs in a zip, uh, which is just so nice. Instead of having to go through the GitHub and trying to figure out what STLs you need to print, it just puts it all here into one nice package. Uh, hardware parts you need. Oh, there we go. I should have just gone here instead of doing it, but this is the motion kit. So this will take you to the AliExpress page. And then um, I ended up also for the fasteners going through AliExpress for just about everything. Um, so let's see, the Pound Motion Kit is highly recommended. I'm not affiliated. Oh, here we go. Okay. So he's not affiliated with the kit. I just want to make sure you have a nice and easy build with the kit. You get a test set of matching parts, um, which is super cool. So build instructions. Oh, here we go. Clipper config. You can add the gear ratio and clipper if you want to, but you don't have to. Please adapt the pins. Sweet. Um, hey, what's up, Ravenous? And Raven, August 1st. Okay, so it was August 1st. The last two months have gone by so quick. Hey, CRS, yeah, documentation is absolutely gross. Like, dude, Kevin. All right, so now we've got, you know, our configuration. This is a render of what we're doing. And we just, you click on the part and it says, let's build the top parts. And so it has how it all goes together. Screw installation. It's a good idea to mount the screws now. You need four and five. So I guess my question is, do I start disassembling first or do I start kind of putting all of this together? Um, yeah, this is insane. I, I'm just saying like, it's absolutely, it's absolutely nuts. These instructions are the same for the Bowden. This instructions show 
Uh, I did the stepper mount with bearings. You need five. Uh, it has one, two, three, four, five skate bearings. The kit, uh, I just took these out from the kit, but there are five skate bearings. Okay, first build the top stuff. All right, let's do that. So let's go here. Let's click on this. Okay. All right, let's 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 just move printer out of the way then. And let's start doing the thing. Um, there's not a lot of space here. I did my best to clear things out as best as I could after the laser stream. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is nuts. This documentation makes me want to build this just because it seems so fun to follow along. All right, so I'm going to start off by just putting out all of the parts that I think we need. Um, on these top parts, are they the same? Like there's two of each or is there any difference? Let me see. So I think, I think they match basically. You have two and two of the same thing. Is there any different? No, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. I remember actually now. So on these, this was the difference that I remembered seeing. Okay. So these parts look the same. Um, but the difference is there's a back on two of them or like, I guess an end cap, and then two of them go all the way through. Oh, there you go, like that. Hey, G Funny, thank you for the gifted membership. Uh, Skydown, you got a membership from G Funny. Thank you very much. Hey, Sim. Okay, so it looks like on this one, the password removed over profile, this is no longer deleted, top parts will be mounted the same. On these ones, I can't tell from this image if these go all the way through or not. I'm imagining that the bearings are going to go the same in all of them, probably. Um, so let's start with, does it matter? Insert, make sure slide difficult, you should not keep animation a bit simpler. Hmm, that is one thing that I'm curious about. If it's uh, all the way through, okay. These, these ones are the, all the through. Okay, so we'll go with the two that are all the way through, which are these guys. <clears throat> and then we are going to get, oh, you guys can't see what I was talking about. So, uh, and this, like this direction of the image, it's hard for me to tell whether these have the back cap, but I guess, oh no, it, it's not hard to tell. I'm silly because if you have it, okay, I'm silly. So if you have it the correct orientation, which would be like this, uh, and you're looking at that image right there, you'd easily be able to see that this has a back on it while the one we're using right now does not have a back on it. All right, so let's start off by taking this bearing. Hopefully my tolerances are okay. Yep, that seems fine. Hopefully, if anything is not in focus, let me know. The camera kind of has a mind of its own at times. Awesome. Okay. So those are in uh, one back cap and one, one back cap and one to go through makes one set. Oh, okay. Okay. So one of them, gotcha. That makes sense. So let's do this one. So all the way through and then a back cap. So let's grab one that has the back on it and it's going to go like that. So we'll throw a bearing in. These, um, these go in pretty easily, Alien. Like, I mean, they're they're tight. I don't see them moving on their own, but uh, I don't think you need a mallet. But I, I agree, I did get a rubber mallet not long ago when we moved here, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty fun to use. Okay, so that's fine. These are going to basically be sitting on each other. Actually, what, something. Okay. Just triple confirming direction, but this seems right. <clears throat> uh, if they're too loose, you can always add some tape to the bearings, which will give you a tighter fit. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, I think it's fine. Okay, so screw installation, it's calling for M uh, M5 by eight. Let me see if any of this stuff is labeled. We got M5 by 40s. M3s. Oh, here we go. We got 
tape on this, don't we? Um, let's exacto these off. Uh, we are going to be doing our normal Polymaker spool giveaway as well. Um, that'll be in about an hour that we'll open up the giveaway and then it'll be open for half an hour. And wait, these are, what do I need? M5 by eights. These are not M5 by eights. These must be the M5 by eights that I bought then. Kind of low profile. So these are not M5 by eights. These are not, these are all M3s. Has to be these guys. Uh, let me confirm really quick here. Yeah, these are the M5x8s. Okay. So we got one, two, three, and four. And then we've got our bag. I'll just throw this on the ground for now. Got our bag of tea nuts. Four of those. Hey, what's up, Aaron? <laughs> Everyone say hi, Aaron. <laughs> She's getting stuff to make lasagna. I'm gonna make lasagna when she gets home. <clears throat> hey, what's up, um, Domin? Okay, so we've got these in and now we're just going to basically pop these in and loosely, let's see if I can get these in. There we go. Uh, let me grab a driver actually to make this a little bit easier to spin these. Is this the right size? It is the right size. All right, we're gonna loosely place the T-nuts on all of these, just maybe like a turn or two each. Like that. I've been craving lasagna, so I'm gonna try, try my hand at making some lasagna. I'm making a recipe that has a serving for 14 people, so there's gonna be a lot of lasagna, whether it's good or bad. Oop. All right, I'm gonna push the Tina on this side towards that side to give me a little bit more clearance. And then it doesn't help that I have like pretty large fingers. It always makes building stuff a little bit interesting. There we go. All right, two screws on that one. Do the same thing on the other side. screws in. Ah. All right, a couple screws in. <clears throat> It's a good idea to mount the screws now. This is you know, this page at the beginning of your journey. That's awesome. Uh, we will make, we will be making chili for a camping trip. There will be a lot of gas. <laughs> Costco lasagna. Yeah, we've uh, we haven't done Costco lasagna actually. Um, G funny says, what time should I come over for dinner? Man, well, let's see. She gets home. She's got to cook for three hours. I'd say nine o'clock. G funny. Nine o'clock is probably an appropriate time. Okay, so I'm assuming that we're just at this point going to be doing the exact same thing. For the other side, does the other side have an instruction or is it basically just mirror, mirror the same thing? Okay, it doesn't look like the other side has a set of its own instructions, but they're the exact same thing. So we're just going to do the exact same thing. So let me grab, we already put a bearing in that one. That's me. Stepping away from meeting, hopefully it doesn't roll out. Okay, Luke, sounds good. Uh, just a note about the build order. You'll prepare all the parts first and do the final assembly in the end. So the step that's named last step. Oh, sick. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Still thinking how I should decorate my new 25. Oh man. <laughs> Have fun with the decorations. Are you guys renting or are you guys buying the place? Because if I, I was looking, I wanted to do like a wood back wall here, but all the stuff that's a temporary when I looked in the like fine details of kind of like gluing laminate stuff to the walls. It all said, oh, um, like damaged paint. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, these fit really nicely. Um, okay, so let's get four more tea nuts. What time is it where you're at, Kevin? You're, you're, in, uh, you're in Europe, right? I think, I think so. All right. 
So we're gonna do the exact same thing, which is pop screws in, uh, T-nut on the inside. Do my best with my fingers. And then just a couple, oh, nope. A couple turns, maybe, come on. There we go. I printed these pretty quickly on the switch wire. I mean, not insane speeds, but it did a really good job. <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. And we dropped it. Hey, zombie with another gifted membership. Thank you, zombie. All right, that one's done. And final one. <clears throat> ah. So regarding stream schedules, I know that we just started doing Monday streams this Monday and the plan was every other week, but my parents are coming to visit in, oh, come on, guy. Uh, my parents are coming to visit in two weeks. And so, I'm still gonna stream that Wednesday as, as part of our normal thing, but we are gonna skip that Monday uh, because I don't wanna spend the entire time that they're visiting streaming, but we're gonna do our Wednesday stream. Uh, we're just gonna skip that Monday. And so it'll be like a one month gap from this last Monday stream to next, but the Wednesday streams will all be um, on schedule. I told my dad originally, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to stream while you guys are here. And he's like, no, 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 you have to do your Wednesday stream. I said, all right, all right. Oh, come on. Last one. It's always the last. No, <laughs> screw down. First drop of the day. Okay. There's like a little bump on the inside of this printed part. And that's what's making it hard to align it. Okay, we did it. Okay, so these four are done and assembled. Hey, Tunky, thanks for renewing your membership, man. Three months. Thank you for the entertaining streams and videos. Hey, I appreciate it. I do my absolute best. <laughs> that's, that's all I can promise is that I do my best every week. Um, hey, what's up, Ted? Let's see, Peter, the plate just enough to with the VP6. And there's a slot hole for the T9. Oh, cool. Okay, let's go here. All right, so we did these. Now we are going to move on to uh, the transmission. Okay. I don't need to do... How do you remove this? your best at that. Thank you, Tunky. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, what gear did I print? I printed this guy. Um, okay, with pliers? It's just any of them, right? Just, just grab one of these and pull it off? I think they all look like they're the same. Wait, 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 no, no, no. They're not all the same. One of them has a smaller... Is it the smaller one? Um, so out of the kit, one of these is smaller. So the one with the eight millimeter bore has to be the smallest one. Uh, time to engrave some poo for laser gods. Smaller's for the stepper. Oh, one of the three? Okay. Okay, so we're removing one of these. One of the three that are matching. Okay, not the small one. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Uh, and you're saying just grab some pliers? Is it, let's see. For dual Z, for ultra low, for, uh, you'll need the original Z motor. It's best to dismantle it now. 
Uh, we can do that. The x-axis is no longer supported. Put something under the x-axis. I want you going down. Transmission will be mounted. Uh, go to place your market league. I'll be looking nice. Good luck. Take one of the 22s you have to remove. Uh, okay, so one, I should have just scrolled down. It says take one of them. So like there's multiple. You have to the flange. You can either use a print tool or just use a pair of pliers to remove it. Um, two on the lip and taco it. Did it the way I had. Uh, this way, no problem. You can use a bottle opener. Okay. All right, let's try it. Oh, that was... <laughs> that was... <laughs> I don't know why, at least that you did say it was easy, but for some reason I was expecting um, like me me to struggle there for a second. That was that was <laughs> very easy. Perfect. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> yeah, very anticlimactic. I don't know why <laughs> I was expecting me to have to struggle. That was incredibly easy. Okay. Take the printed gear. So this guy. I was about to say, if, if, uh, if I can do it, you'll have no problem. Yeah, I've just never removed the top of one of those before, so I had no idea. Um, take it, insert it into the T. You just remove the flange from secure the assembly with five M3 by six and tighten them crosswise. Make sure the hub is flush with the printed gear. Okay, so we're going, we're going from the back side, I would imagine. Uh, it looks like, yeah, screw holes need to be on that side. So this should just press fit in. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that is a nice and snug fit. And then it says what? M3 sixes, which are going to be, I think in here, none of this is labeled. Um, where is, there we go. Pi, I love this. Uh, Pi hooked me up with this. Uh, screw organizer when I was using my metric ruler to organize things and it has been super handy. I don't know why I didn't make and use one of these beforehand. Uh, okay, so these look like, oops, these guys are the M3. Actually, these M3 by sixes. Yes, yes. Okay, and we need how many? Four, five. Okay, so one, two, yeah, it's super handy. And it has a little um, thing I like. So I've printed these before, but I think I pretty much always did single color. And this one's dual color, so it's nice to read. Uh, and then there's a magnet in the back. So after the stream, I just stick it to the leg uh, of the desk, and it's always there. All right, one, two, three. Come on, fingers. Four, five. Okay. And it says, so we're doing one in all of them. And it says to cross... Cross tighten them, take them into them and secure them and tighten them crosswise. Make sure the hub is flush. Okay, so we are going to grab a much smaller driver. This is not the one. This is also not the one. This is the correct one. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is, is just kind of insert all of them in. Uh, so that way they're at least started and then I will cross tighten them. So let's see if I can Hopefully get these in. Okay, that's, yeah, they're going in pretty easily. Okay, they're probably only gonna see big, my fingers for a second here while I get these started. Okay, so I've got all of them kind of loosely in, and it says to sort of cross tighten them. So we'll go like there, 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 there. <clears throat> uh, useful when I dump out my sorting. Oh man, I um, I had one of these sitting on the edge of my workbench because I've been working on like five projects at once, which is not normally how I like to do things. Uh, so for finger stream, thank you. <laughs> um. And it, it fell like, yeah, it, it, I 
I left it on the edge and of course I left the freaking lid open and was like, yeah, I'll just, I'll leave it open for a second and then I'll close it. And in that second, it, it just fell everywhere. So, um, very handy for that. I guess I'm going to just kind of still just go little by little with each of them until they get closer, kind of align into the teeth. Okay. And now we'll go, so we'll fully tighten this one. Then we'll cross over and do this one. Oops. I am officially getting, uh, I've decided I'm, I am going to be getting a TV for that wall soon in front of me. So that way I can just look up and read chat. I've been like trying to justify, justify it. And then, uh, it is almost my birthday in nine days. And so I said for my birthday, I'm going to do it. And so I'm going to see if I can find a really expensive, expensive opposite of that inexpensive 32 inch. Uh, cause I think that'll be good enough to be able to like really accurately see all of chat um and if it ends up being more expensive than the one we have in our like old tv in our bedroom i'm just gonna take the bedroom tv and put that in here okay so i have it fairly tight i don't anytime it's printed parts like try not to over tighten anything at the risk of cracking it but yeah that should be good so um go no focus there we go but yeah those those were pretty simple to get in all right <clears throat> Hey, what's up, Pansy? Long time no see. Hey, Zarin's here too. I didn't see you in the chat. I was like, Zarin's got to be here. I was like, this is the guy that showed me this mod initially. Okay. Uh, so now it says we want our motor. I think up here it said it's time to remove the Z motor, lead screw, and motor mount. So let's do that. Let's also try not to knock anything off of the desk because that won't be fun. Uh, these are parts that we've already assembled. This will go here. This will go here. V2 coming off the ground. Okay. Here for 20 minutes. Oh, okay, gotcha. I was, I figured you, hey, what's up, Carl? Figured you were here. I was like, there's no way he'd miss this one. There's just no way. All right. So we are going to move uh, the Z-axis motor now. So we'll start off by unplugging it. Uh, get your blue tape roll to rest the gantry on. Do I have a blue tape roll? I have, you mean because it's going to drop down? I've got VHB because boron. <laughs> so we'll put VHB there so that way when this drops down it won't scratch up the bed. Although this bed is really um, kind of already scratched up. So, but thank you. Okay, so we are going to do that. And then I think we will just start by loosening listening this guy do one turn couple turns wow it is stronger than I am cheese okay creality oh my god that that is the <laughs> what all right that is the strongest um, set screw bolt I've ever experienced on one of these guys. Um, let's see. I need one with a little thing. I need a little leverage. That's crazy. There we go. And we did it. Yay. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> uh, why don't you use your extruder motor? Uh, what do you mean? The bottom on the couple is pretty tight. Don't use one with a ball at the end. Yeah, well, lesson learned. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to lift this like that. And then I am going to pull out. Actually, let me, let me pull out the lead screw. Let's see, let's move up a little. It's usually easier to actually just to drop it down if we have the height for it. I don't know that we will if we go all the way top. Uh, 
Okay, motor has to come out first. That was a fail. All right, we're going the other way. <laughs> I thought I'd have enough height to remove this thing. Let's drop it down a little bit. You can use the old extreme. Oh! That's what you, okay, okay. I brain farted for a second. When you said use the extruder motor, I was like, what do you mean I need an extruder? You're saying, so this mod was done when we lived in California. There is no way uh, that that motor made the journey. Um, there's just no way. And if it did, it's somewhere in a box that I don't know. But yeah, okay, that makes sense. Now, I apologize. I get what you're saying. When you said use the old extrude, uh, extruder motor. Yeah, the V2 does come with a button. You're right, Thomas. I uh, it went, it went right over my head. Hey, it's your birthday in seven days. Your birthday is two days before me. Okay, so why is this not? Jeez, my roller wheels are super tight. It's not even dropping. But uh, we're going to drop the hot end down onto this tape just so that way it doesn't scratch our glass bill plate. And now we can move on to remove this motor. <sighs> Okay, uh, let's see, probably gonna need this guy. Yep. Two little screws. And... Should be good, yep, there we go. Okay, so we'll move this guy over here with our lead screw that we're not gonna be needing and then Yeah, those rollers are <laughs> aggressively tight. There's no slot, but I will absolutely loosen those once we have Z support on both sides. Okay, so let's move camera a little bit, I think. We gotta remove this last little bracket from the motor. There we go. Okay, uh, we're gonna need a smaller driver. Uh, I think you're the one. All right, motor has been freed. Thank you, Guppy. I turn 30 on the 30th, <laughs> which sounds crazy to me. I, I was joking with Aaron for the last few years. I was like, 30 is gonna be, we're gonna be old when we hit 30. And now I'm like, 30 is the new, <laughs> the new 18. <laughs> okay, so motor's out. Let's see what it says now, going back to this. I think we can remove the printer. We got the parts off that we needed. Printer's gonna go back on the ground. Ugh, like that. Uh, this could be flat spots due to too much tension. There's temporary deformation of the printer. Haven't moved for a long time. Uh, it's very possible. Uh, halfway to 60, exactly. Um, it's very possible there could be flat spots. Um, this Ender 3 V2 has definitely not gotten a lot of love in a while. It's been, it's been sitting. So I guess if that's the case, I may end up replacing, if the roller wheels are bad, I may end up switching over to rails uh, eventually. So we'll see. Uh, with the belted Z, you will use this machine much more. It fixes so much pain with this printer. Yeah, game plan is to mount the uh, RPi 4B to this, and so that way I can use it from the garage where it sits. Because uh, with the belted mod and the direct drive, dual gear direct drive, all metal hot and micro Swiss, like it can print a lot of things. So I'm hoping, I've noticed that my printers with Clipper get a lot more use than my printers with Marlin, primarily because um, if I need to tweak anything on them, it's so much easier. And since they're all wirelessly controlled, it's, uh, it's great. <clears throat> Which electric screwdrivers are good for working with 3D printers? Anyone know? I Yeah, I've got the WOW uh, wow stick and I don't think I'd necessarily recommend it. I mean, it, it does the job here and there, but it's definitely not a very powerful, um, not a very powerful unit. Okay, so printed parts I've got right here. Uh, take the tension arm, insert two M3 nuts and an M5 nut. So, um, M5, where are the M5 nuts? M5 nuts, so we are. Let's 
This is a very odd hardware box. Um, I am very confused. Is this a locking mechanism? Dear God. Um, what? Is there a lock on this? I'm giving this thing like... <laughs> I'm giving this thing like another second of trying to open and if I break it. Uh. Dude, this is wild. There we go. Ah, nope, it was me opening it from the wrong side. Okay, so we've got one M5. I've got lock nuts, so that's what we're using. And then M3 nuts, it said as well, which should be inside of this little guy. Let's go side cam for a second. So this part, this part, we'll need the motor in a second. We've got two M3 nuts. It says, uh, insert two M3 nuts into the back of it. So this side. Uh, next we mod from N3 will be custom eight millimeter machine. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, use a 4240 extruder motor for the jack because it'll have more torque. I don't have any, um, I don't have any right now. Otherwise I totally would. I don't have any, no extra stepper motors made the trip. Okay, these are just going into these pockets. One on the top, one on the bottom. It's a little, top one's a little bit tighter than bottom one, so just gotta be careful not to have those fall out. And then it looks like the M5 bolt is going to go, I'll try my best to show it. It looks really clear in the illustration, but there's basically a pocket right there for it to sit in. So if I can, See if we can get it with, there we go. Okay. Right there. Uh, Eggie's going, Eggie's going to sleep. Time for me to go off into bed. Have a nice day, uh, day and night and a fun stream chat. Hey, have a great night, Eggie. Uh, next week we are starting a new printer build, uh, which will be a lot of fun. It is the Core XY machine and we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but I'll have it scheduled probably tonight. I'm gonna schedule the next like two or three weeks worth of streams tonight because I have I have an actual schedule, which is impressive for me. Okay, so A is that marriage of the NEMA and the tension arm. Okay, so now we're going to take this and it also, it does show, which I really like, you can see where the plug or which direction the, the oh, and you can zoom, dude. You can see where the uh, cable plug is supposed to be orientation wise, which is nice. So we're going to grab, okay, M5 wants to fall out. Please don't do that. Okay, so we want this way downwards. I'm gonna put the motor on top, which is kind of what it shows. And it's going to go like, it looks like section. Okay, so the section with the M5 is where you want the plug to be. So we're going like this and like that. We did it. Hey, what's up, Nuno? I feel like I, feel like I haven't seen you in a minute. How's it going? Okay, and then we're gonna take uh, M3 by eight millimeters screws. I think all of the M3 screws that we're gonna need are in this guy. Um, let's see. Handy dandy measurements. Oh, perfect. Those look like eights to me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. How I many did I say four, right? Yeah, one for each of the motor holes. One, two. Come on, man. There we go. Hardest part of the build is getting the bolts out. Okay. Uh, find the right driver. There we go. It says screw the um, screw the prepared parts. Uh, I've seen cheap N3 rail mods with everything coming with it. Maybe try that out. Comes with a replacement X brake. Everything you know, completely you know, is interesting. Maybe I'll take a look at that. We'll see. I'm gonna try it with the roller wheels as is. But if the parts are still looking funky and there's dead or flat spots. And that's just probably the direction we go. I don't really see myself wanting to replace all the roller wheels. 
Uh, okay, screw the repair, attention, uh, attention. The side with the M3 nodes face the motor, also attach the 16 teeth pulley to the motor shaft. The position of the pulley is not important. We will adjust it later. Okay. Wait, do I need to attach it before? I don't think so. Let's just, let's get these installed. Also, someone keep an eye on the clock for me. Uh, in 34 minutes and we'll open the, open the giveaway for the polymaker filament. Spool of polymaker filament. Just kind of loosely threading these in. What's up, Dan? Uh, just working and looking. <laughs> That's funny. That's like the name of the game there. There's quite a few streams that I, I attend, but I usually am watching them from my phone or like out in the garage multitasking, so I'm not in chat a lot. Um, I watch quite a few working and lurking. All right, that looks pretty damn good to me. And then it says, hey, what's up, Tom Lama? Time is up for filament? It is not time. Does it matter which direction? Does it matter which direction the pulley goes on? And we said the smaller one goes in the motor shaft, which makes sense. Uh, there is no flat spot on this motor shaft, which sucks. That's definitely a bummer. Yeah, does it need to go teeth side down or teeth side up? Let me see if there's an image of it. Um, okay, teeth side up. Let's loosen these, nope. Oh, man. I'm gonna, so I've been getting scam calls all the time. Someone put my name on a list and I've been answering as Kermit the Frog. So we're gonna try it, hold on. Kermit the Frog here. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is Kermit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> someone put me on a call list like it happened probably two or three weeks ago and i get like five or ten calls a day and so originally i was looking for an app to stop it <laughs> um originally i was looking at like different robo apps and i tried one it didn't really work that well and so now like i just answer as kermit the frog <laughs> oh my god <laughs> or or just like I, I like do different accents but kermit's definitely a favorite <laughs> Uh, I know so I um I it's interesting I bought the domain so I've had the domain 3d print love for a long time which was a blog that got um like compromised a wordpress blog and then I purchased the domain modbot army to have that as the primary and then redirect but I haven't done anything with it yet and so somehow when I registered that domain that get my got my info out there so all of them are like seo web uh, web development stuff like that um most of them are call centers like all of them are call centers basically so um <laughs> that threw me off <laughs> all right uh yes so we're gonna tighten this and it says it doesn't exactly matter as far as we're gonna adjust it so we're just gonna place it kind of loosely right now but it's on there like so <laughs> google pixel phones with their call screening is such a lifesaver yeah i know uh, Joel Telling has something on his, because I'd called him one time uh, and he had a robocaller. And so he, he his is awesome. You basically, you can't, if you're not in the person's phone book, it goes to the robo thing. You have to say your name and what you want, and then it goes through. So it should get rid of some of the automated ones, but uh, it's interesting. <sighs> that was fun. I'm glad we, <laughs> we got to experience that together. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. Uh, let's see, tension ring, we need 
Uh, let's see, insert an M5 nut. Uh, we've also got, there's the nylon lock nuts, there we go. Looks like we'll just put this in like that. And then it wants us to grab a M530. Uh, these are not those. M540. Oh, nope, M530s. That's this guy. They're big screws. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm hoping it doesn't matter that mine's a cap head. Mine has a really large head on it. Okay, so let's go like this. Quickly install this guy. Uh, we're gonna need a we're gonna need a bigger boat. Um, let's see. I think this guy. This looks too large. Of course it is. <laughs> I'm consistent. I consistently grab the wrong driver every single time. All right, there we go. Any head should be fine. Okay, awesome. Socket head is fine. Awesome. Is there a giveaway today? Yes. Uh, giveaway will get posted in 20, 29 minutes. Um, wow. Please don't break. So I have lock nuts, um, not regular M5 nuts. And so getting it beyond, getting it beyond that thread, that thread kind of sucks. Uh, bear with me. I'm gonna get to get off camera to see if I can just kind of brute force it. If not, I might need to use these needle nose pliers to hold it in place. Nope, that's gonna scratch the top out of it. Okay, new idea. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, have you used Kevin's Clicky Probe? Uh, if you have to put the nut thread uh, yeah, 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 nut thread first. Uh, if you could clicky probe, I'll create my ender and just print the parts right. I have not. I saw his clicky probe though, and it looks absolutely awesome. Um, I am not, I think that he has it designed for the default hot ends. No, 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 it's not for default. I think it's designed for his tool head that he has. Uh, I, I might be mistaken again, I've only looked into it very minimally. Um, but all of my enders are running, two of them are running the micro Swiss NG, and one is running. Uh, a new hot end and um so i don't think it'll just i don't think it will just uh work i think that i'll have to i think that i will have to modify it if i'm going to use it it looks awesome though i i do prefer clicky after using it now on the switch wire and seeing how awesome it's been um i definitely prefer it yeah that was way better i definitely prefer it over like a bl touch or something like that Uh, it works on every stock X mounting plate. It's not, uh, the NG though isn't stock. Like it has their own machined mounting plate. Granted, I don't know. It might still have the same back portion where you mount it from, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Ooh, you're running the direct. Okay. If that's the case then, uh, with the micro Swiss NG, then I am definitely up for that. We can, we can do a stream installing that as well. I would like to install it on this, to be honest with you. Uh, at least you keep the original metal. Yeah, so this one has a different metal plate. I just don't know if, again, the back of it's different or not. I'll have to look into it. If the step file is available, I might be able to just slightly modify the mounting points for the, for the back of the uh, NG plate. Okay, so we're done with that. Next, we're gonna grab this big part. Uh, looks like insert bearing. It should fit snugly. Make sure the bearing uh, bearing slides straight in. Otherwise, it'll be difficult to insert the bearing. You should not need a tool for this. Okay, we'll go back to side camera. It should only take a split second. Uh, last bearing is just dropping in here. And it fits beautifully like all the other bearings did as well. Uh, I think that is the same. It might be the same back. It's definitely super similar. Super, super similar. Uh, all steps available, nice. Now Daniel just needs to put the Frankenstein duct on too. 
Please wait till I upload the next update of the cla uh, class. Just need some further testing. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I'm absolutely in no rush. I think based off of the current projects I have here, uh, we have like three months worth of, of live streams. <laughs> uh, some of them can be shifted around. So if it does come out, I absolutely can prioritize it over some of the things on here. But yeah, I'm not in any rush, Kevin. I'll wait then until uh, you've got the next version or, you know, whatever. And if, if you want to ping me, that'd be awesome. You always get the cat. Hey, what's up, babies? Okay, so done with that, done with that. Uh, now it's telling us T-nut galore. Uh, let's see, it's a good idea to mount the screws now, otherwise. On this one, it doesn't state lengths, but I'm assuming, and maybe I'm wrong in assuming, but I'm assuming it's probably the same as was used on the other parts, which were M5 by, are these M5-8s? Yeah, M5-8s. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I have glasses on, uh, but you wouldn't know that. It says M5 by 8s, I just can't, can't read. Building printers is no problem. Reading, that is something I'm still, still figuring out. One, two, three, four, five. All right, go into the side. Um, I have a question, uh, Kevin. So the, this right here, I'm not entirely thinking it's needed for the Ender 3 V2. Originally I was going to do this on the Ender 3. And so I, uh, I mean, this basically seems like it relocates it. So instead of being on the backside of the, one second, this music is way too aggressive. Uh, instead of being on the backside of the... Z rail, uh, since it won't have a spot there now, you basically mount it to the bottom. Do you have one of these for the um, for the Meanwell power supply? Because this looks like the width of it is probably for the non Meanwell version. Because uh, I'm converting another printer with a completely different mod, but I was looking into uh, setups. No, 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 this is totally not your fault, because initially this was going to be, uh, this was going, this whole mod was going into an Ender 3. It wasn't until last minute I decided to go the V2. I just, I, since I had this printed out, I was like, oh, I wonder if he has a, oh, sick, there's a remix on Thingiverse for the Meanwhile. Sick. Okay. Awesome. Because yeah, I need to print one for a different printer. I just, just like, since I have you here. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and install uh, all of these T-nuts. So, just like we did a moment ago. These guys are going through. And I also like to have a, I like to use a driver because it helps me out. I'm just gonna try to power through this since we've seen me do this already now, a few times. Just gonna do the same thing, like kind of put them on. Ah. Turn them maybe twice. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna power through here as I drop it. Come on. We did it. Okay. What if it's easier to try to place the T-nut and line the T-nut? That might be easier. Line the T-nut up and then drop the screw in. And we don't actually... No, I still like having the driver. Uh, thanks for all the distracting. Uh, my meeting is over and he isn't pretty. <laughs> yeah, I'm great at getting distracted. Even when, like, just all the time, it doesn't matter whether like I'll, I'll go into a room to do a task and then like, I don't know, 20 minutes later, I'm like, why why am I here? Like I, I like I get just sidetracked by some other thing. Ooh, always been that way. <laughs> Chat definitely doesn't help though. The amount of times I'm like, wait, how did we get here? Uh, I think we'll do the bottom one first on this side. All right, a couple of threads, that's good. Last one. That's and no, last one slipping. It's always 
I don't know what it is. It's always the last one that gets me every time. Let's see. All right. We did it. Uh, all tensioning systems have been updated. Oh, nice. What version am I? What version am I running? I don't. I don't actually know. I know that I updated. I know that I updated the prints because Kevin caught me like a month ago, and it was okay. I'm on three point six. Nice. I was say like I I was um I had just started printing a couple parts. He's like, wait, uh, if you haven't gone too far, there's a new version. So I I ended up printing what was the latest then, which again it was in the last um in the last oh what is this oh we need to attach the things okay so we did that now it says finally you just have to bring everything together attach the tension arm the transmission body. using two and three screws. Moshers. Also, a speed attention ring will see the hole in the transmission body. Okay. Does it matter which, like... Let's see. Okay. Side. Grabbing motor. Uh, does it show the direction? Okay, so it looks like plug should be facing... Let's squeeze him out a little bit. We can do that. Wow, we were really zoomed in. Jeez. Uh, okay. So this like this, uh, like this, and then this like this, and the tabs go through like that. Nice. Okay, and then we're gonna grab this little tension guy, and we're going to just thread. Hey goof, it's not long enough. I'm, I'm thinking that this bolt should go into, or this, yeah, this bolt should go into there, but it doesn't. Oh wait, no, it, it does not. It looks like I probably need a slightly longer one, right? Slide the stepper mechanism. Oh. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Gotcha. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you, everyone. That was a test, and everybody passed. Okay, so let's see. It says we need two M3 by 10s. That's hilarious. These are not right size. Wait, maybe no. I think I mixed these up. You go there. Can you bring, can you blow your fingers, please? <laughs> Sorry, Zarent. All right. Okay, and then we're gonna add these two, oh, it says washers. Uh, washers, washers, washers. We do have a tiny little bag of washers. I would have done the same thing. Yeah, I, uh, I guess I just, I centered it when I put it on there. And, or maybe I didn't center it, I don't know what I did. I did the wrong thing. I'd like to think I would have figured it out, but yeah. Was... <clears throat> okay. So, uh, uh, um, attach it with M3 screws. So are we gonna go, how tight are we going with these? Uh, do not tight. Oh, do not tight them yet. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead. Okay, did I goof on that? Because now that doesn't seem to want to go. M3 by 10 mil. Huh, these are M... Wait a minute. Yeah, these are M3 by 10. They seem too short. Just go up a size. I 
do you think, Kevin? We've got M3 um, 12s. Okay, he used 12s. Cool. I've got 12s. We will do that then, because it, it definitely... This one's not me, I don't think. It, it just looks like it's a hair short. Oh, come on. Alright, let me hold on to the washer until I get it to drop in. Yeah, that seems, that seems much better. Uh, I blame gravity. <laughs> yeah, I would say, because even with the 12s, like, uh, if you're going to tighten it and just have it not tightened, tightened, like, you no, know, but like, so that way it's actually biting the teeth of the screw, I, I would definitely say it seems like the 12s are... Clubs are perfect. Push down a little bit. Okay. So they're, they're, it's tight, but not too tight. Well, they're installed. I think I might need to loosen them a hair um, when we actually start doing the tension part of things. But that, that definitely seems better. No, no worries. I, I would have, there's been quite a few builds where I'm like, that seems a little small. Maybe it's a me thing, but I just go up, you know, the next two mil or whatever is needed. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, for dual Z, repeat the steps for the second side, which we don't need to do. Uh, so let's go back. <laughs> Put the whole assembly upside. Oh, is that all it is? Is that the M3 screws are in the pocket? Maybe that's what it is, Zenzer, right? Because I know that at least one of them was kind of loose, so maybe that's it. They just drop, and that's the couple mil. Yeah, gravity. That makes sense, Guppy. Uh, you will have to tighten them. At the... Okay, sweet. Sounds good. Thank you, thank you. All uh, right, so let's go... Dual Z repeats. Okay, so we're done with that. We're done with that. We're done with that. Um... Let's build the new plates. Okay, sweet. So this is done. For now, these are all done. All right, plate assembly. So we've got two plates, uh, which are slightly different than each other. Um, okay, so it looks like we're doing the same thing on both sides for this portion of it. And that's gonna be, okay, these instructions are the same Need plates or something I like. Uh, I'll check the screw links just to verify. Okay, these instructions are the same for the boat and direct drive. The instructions show the stock setup. Even though the plates of the direct drive setup look a bit different, the installation steps are the same. With the direct drive extruder setup, you can simply skip the reinstallation of the extruder. Depending on your setup, you may have to remove the PSU to have access to plates. Okay, insert two M3 nuts. So let's grab four. We'll just do double of everything since we're gonna need to do it for both the left and right plate, one, two, three, and four. And then we also need, um, to keep these nuts in place, you can temporarily fix the belt clamp with two M312 and the belt block with an M3 by 25. Okay, so this looks like that is one of the pieces. Did I goof? Why would, um, why do you need two different size screws to hold them into place? It looks like to keep the nuts in place, you can temporarily fix the belt clamps with two and three toes and the belt block. Oh, oh, there's a top. I'm, I, gotcha. That's the thing up top. Okay. So let's do this. Um, there's actually a little bit of filament in there. Let's see. Hey, what's up? Hey, Dan, what's going on? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, we've got quite a bit of the, so kind of assembling all of the printed parts. Um, we're making good progress on that. And then after that, we will be installing it on the printer itself, but not a whole ton. I'm off, hope it will go as expected. 
Hey, thanks for hanging out, Raven. Okay, so let's, I think I have a drill bit somewhere. Is it in here? Yes. I was clearing out some printed part holes, so it's not totally needed, um, but down below, I at least want to try to clear out. It's basically just from the uh, the overhang of these, these nuts. So I'm gonna push those through and then uh, grab a flush cutter and just try to snip a little strip of it to... It shouldn't be an issue either way, but if the plastic goes in to the nut, um, then I could see it making tightening a little bit tougher. But I'm just gonna just tiny little snip of this big piece. Well, I don't even care to remove it all, just, just a tiny little bit. Yeah, my stomach is growling and I had my um, sort of like stream day, um, what is it, a um, not recipe, ritual, ritual. My stream day ritual is to have egos and a glass of orange juice before stream. So I did, I did do that. But it might, there might be some trail mix in my future. Uh, just push the Allen key through the other side. Yeah, I guess Allen key would have worked. I didn't need to actually drill anything out. I just, I knew I had that here from yesterday when I actually had to drill something out. So, okay, so bolts going in. Fits nice. We'll probably press it against there. Yeah, that's perfect. That is not, I did not get that lined up perfectly. There we go, kinda. I don't think I need, um, keep, uh, keeping this in place you can temporarily, if it's not necessary, at least for these belts, uh, for these ones, I don't think I'm going to do, so it looks like I use the Prusa method, screw in, uh, with the washer. Oh, gotcha. Yep. That, that makes sense. Because then you definitely know that your, your screws all the way through. You're not getting plastic in. Yeah. So it looks like if, um, like if your, t uh, tolerances are kind of loose and you don't want the nuts to fall out, you can use these fittings to kind of hold them in place. But at least for these bottom ones, they're, they are tight. I'm going to just leave it as is. So this one's done. We also need to drop in uh, what goes in the top? M5, insert two M3 nuts in the back plate as well as in the slot in the front. Okay, so then we need an M3, another one, uh, that's going to go into this top fitting, it looks like, right? Yes. Yeah, and that one's got, like, really nice tolerances as well. I'm going to push it all the way down, hopefully. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm imagining that should go all the way. Let me see if I can show. Um, it's basically a hollow cavity. So it looks like nut should go all the way down. So that way when you thread into here, it threads into the nut. But when I push down, it seems to stop. So I'm gonna see if I can, see if I can rotate it slightly and get it to drop in nicely. Let's see. Let me try, um, let's see, I think I've got, we'll just use these guys to pull this out really quick. Uh, you can also press the plate on the desk. Yeah, that's what I ended up doing. Hey, what's up, Zach? I'm doing good. How you doing, man? Happy Wednesday. Uh, let's see on this one if it, if it lines up a little bit better. Also, let me just see in the, in the camera, or in the, um, in the CAD. Okay, so it looks like it should be completely flat on top, so. Man, this guy is tough. I, um, do I have concern if I, wow. If I use a tool to push it all the way down, am I risking damaging it? This one's even tighter than the other one. I'm like almost wondering if I should just get my mallet and tap it. Yeah, that one's even tighter. I don't know if I'll be able to actually pull that one out. <clears throat> I 
Oof. Uh, what do I have that I can use to push push this in? Yeah, if I'm gonna get it all the way down, I'm gonna need make sure the flat side is up, so not with the corner first. This one's definitely flat side up. This one wants to rotate on me. This one like only seems to want to go down when it rotates. Um, let's see if I line this up on the desk and just that's super tight. I'm thinking I just use a flathead and apply a lot of pressure. I pushed them with an Allen key. I've used a uh, large sub channel locks to buy it down into using another nut press. So that makes sense. Gotcha. I wonder if mine. Um, I wonder if these M3 nuts are just really a little bit wider. I'm gonna use a flathead and see if I can just get it to pop into place. It's going. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. It's still going. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. New plan is hopefully. Let me see if I got a small Allen key. I'm gonna try to get this to pop out, which I don't know if I'll be able to now after that. Uh, and then I'm going to run to the garage, if I can get this out, and see if I've got, it's gonna be two, let's see. I'm gonna see if I've got other M3 nuts somewhere. Maybe these are just a tad bit wider than standard. Um, let's see, do I have a small flathead that can fit inside? I think I must. Uh, I'm scared to, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, let's try a different, let's, let's rule that out, right? These are obviously being not very nice to us. Um, so, let me grab these little flush cutters so I can get the edge of this guy. Nope. All right, let's try a flathead. Yeah, I'm gonna try, before I just go absolutely nuts. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna see if I've got different M3 nuts. I'm sure I do from a Voron build or something like that because I would rather not go crazy since I don't have spares of those and I've been known to break a thing or two. So, one second guys. Uh, let's see, M3, M3 nuts right here. Okay, these look roughly the same. Um, do I have any silver ones that look kind of different? Nope, not in there I don't. M3. Of course, I only have two. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, press inserts and two nuts. Uh, M3 L nut. What is that? Lock nut. That's what it is. Okay, well, I've got. I think you guys can probably hear me from the garage. Okay, we're gonna try these. I'm sure these are the exact same. I probably ordered these from AliExpress. <laughs> I probably got them from the same vendor. Um, also gonna grab a Chewy Bar. What's up, monkey? <clears throat> Chewy Bar, Trail Mix. What's up, Boba? All right, I'm back. Oh, edge up. Ah, okay.
No worries. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to try these ones just because I went out to the garage and found them. And they are slightly different. These are like a flat black. Not that it matters. Okay. Let's go side. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. So we're saying point. Oh, dude. These are so much better. Maybe not. Maybe I <laughs> I might just have to use a flathead with a tiny mallet and see if we can. Okay, that one went. That one went in much nicer. Let's see. It's so weird. I don't. I don't understand. Um. Uh, flaps to the wall, points towards you. Yeah. Now well, this one's rotating differently. Very odd. Alright, so I think the game plan is... Pop these out one more time. I'm going to grab a small rubber, or small rubber. I'm gonna grab my rubber mallet and see if I can get these to tap in. <clears throat> this one's rotating now the other direction. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that brute force is our next option, honestly. It's possible that, for whatever reasoning, that direction when I printed it, the tolerances were just kind of off. It might have been my fault, Kevin. It's possible that when I printed these parts out, for whatever reason, the tolerances just weren't that good right there. I mean, everything else has been really tight, so it's been. Uh, let me let me grab the rubber mount and just see if see if we can do it. <clears throat> is here. What I'm going to try to do is just get them, try to get them started. <laughs> Gravity. Yeah, it's, yeah, I did try. So we've tried two different M3 nuts and then I've tried both directions. All right, let's give it a go. Hope for the best. So pointy side is, yeah, it starts off, like at least this one now, it starts off going in really easily. I'm nervous using a mallet, but I just, I don't know if I can really brute force it much more than I have. All right, everyone, silent moment. Nearly there. It did rotate again though, like it's now it's kind of flat side up. Yeah, we're good. We're good. One more little tap. Just. Yeah, that should be good. So. You can see now the nuts pretty much aligned with the hole. We should really get the thread through. Uh, give, oh, give a reminder. Yep, yep. 
Uh, I did a comparison some time ago. It had five different M3 sizes. Yeah, I mean, well, regardless, like, um, it's it seems like it's gonna work <laughs> with the mallet. It just needs a little more a little more love uh, than than anticipated. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna drop the we're doing our Polymaker Weekly Spool giveaway into the chat. Uh, give me one second here. All you gotta do is fill out the form, and it's free international shipping. I will either contact you via Discord or email, depending. If I talk to you already, then I'll just message you on Discord with the form to fill out. And if uh, not, then I'll just send you an email afterwards. So here is, oops, that's not right. Uh, there you go. We'll let it run a little bit longer. Normally we have it run for 30 minutes, so at two o'clock uh, or three o'clock my time. Um, but we'll let it run a few minutes after just because I was a little bit tardy, a little bit late for this. Okay, so we got one in. Let's see. Uh, fingers crossed we can get the other one to line up. I mean, again, it's only something you have to do once. It's not really not that big of a deal. And like you said, if there's different size M3 and they're being sourced from different places, then it's tough to accommodate that. This one I'm slightly worried about because it's a bit tighter. And this one I do think was possibly the printer uh, that just didn't do a fantastic job on this section. Yeah, that one went flat as well. Delilah! Delilah! Come here! What are you doing, girl? Her ear's been bugging her, she's scratching it. Okay, this one went flat. What happened to the other one? The other one? I want to try to get it in at least not flat, so that way it's in the pocket like it's supposed to be. Uh, where under the trail mix. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely say a call out. Um, a call out would be nice. Okay, so I've got this one started. Actually, I have an idea. Okay, so let's start it pointed, pointed side. Let's do this up against here. Okay, still kind of has pointed side up, so I think we're gonna be good. And now let's try to take a little, a little tap. Nope, it went flat. Ooh, don't crack, I think we got it. Nearly there, nearly there, it corrected itself, so pointy sides up. Basically there, one one more for good luck. All right, we're good. <clears throat> I feel like, uh, what's up, Larry? Hey, Mr. Jonah, what's going on? I felt like uh, Happy Gilmore, just tap it in, just tap it in, tap, tap it in. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. If you have not, please smack the like button. We've got, it looks like 86 viewers and 46 likes. That'd be awesome if we could hit 100 is the goal. If we can hit 100, that'd be awesome. Yeah, go in your home. I love Happy Gilmore. It's been a while since I've watched it, but man, I, uh, <laughs> it is great. Okay, so we got that. Um, we definitely, oh, you know what? I also need to put the last two nuts onto the bottom of this one. Uh, we definitely don't need anything to help hold these in place. <laughs> so that's a positive. Um, let's see, this guy plays flat. Is there chocolate on my finger? Yeah, this <laughs> chewy bar. Chewy bar fights back. All right, and then last one goes right here. Only peasy. Like that. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous, Kevin. I was like, please don't crack, please don't crack. The parts are crazy strong though with the, the perimeters that you recommend printing them in. They're really strong. Uh, what's up, Bear Squad? Okay, secure the knots, keep it in place, yada yada. Ooh, okay. Remove lead screw plate. Sweet, okay. So let's, let's do this. 
I am having fun though, which is, I mean, always important, right? A little challenge. It wouldn't be a 3D printing build if there wasn't some form of challenge. So you've already, you've already like um, made it where it kind of handholds you through the process, Kevin. I've, there's got to be at least one curveball. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now it wants us to remove. That is not in focus. Uh, let me let me bring a little light over here for everybody. Shine some light on the extrusions. Okay, I think that's a little bit better, hopefully. Uh, we should maybe add some riddles. <laughs> did we finally get all the nuts into the part? I did, Luke, I did. Uh, mallet and a little flathead was the answer. Um, this was not on the bamboo, no. This was on the Voron switch wire and they're all printed in polylite uh, purple ABS. Okay, so looking at this, we need to, we already removed the motor. Oh, a long time ago, I guess. And then just take the nuts off, take plate off. Cool. Okay, so going back to, that's me. Someone remind me uh, when it's two o'clock, or in 18 minutes, since everyone's in different places in the world, to do a five minute warning for the giveaway. Pretty please. Okay, so this is, it looks like nylon lock nuts, at least on two of them. Interesting. So they have it backwards on this. So we are going to, so that means everything's going to drop off. It looks, it looks like this is the roller wheels. I can't just take the nut off. Let's see. It's okay. We'll figure this out. So uh, driver, driver, driver. Pull, need on those pliers since these are nylon lock nuts, and we turn. Oops. Uh, Matthew, giveaways pinned in chat. Uh, good luck with the rest of the build. Uh, got to go things to do apparently. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out, Carl. Okay, so we are just going to do our best to pop things off. And just uh, keep it all in one place. So spacer, roller wheel, bolt, one more spacer. Uh, which filament are the parts printed in? It's in, <clears throat> it is in, no, no worries, uh, Matthew. Hey, what's up, nice? Uh, it is in Polylite, Polymaker Polylite Purple ABS. Polylite, Polymaker Purple, wow, that's a lot of peas. Okay, uh, so we've got that one. Now we need to unscrew the bottom one. Same thing, it's a nylon lock nut. Okay, nut is off. Popping out the screw. This one's much easier. And then let's not lose. Let's just keep all these in one small pile here. It's a safe pile. Uh, just to, hey, just a little bit late. <laughs> uh, yeah, the V2 crowd put the nut in the extrusion. Uh, you have to take the metal plate off. Uh, then remove the plate. Therefore, you also have to remove the other side. Oh. Okay, so I need to do, okay, so the difference on this one is plate comes off. What's the, wait, what's the reason I need? To... Okay, let's just, let's continue on here one second. Um... We'll figure it out. I'm not too worried. Is this one a lock nut? No, no. This one's just... Why is this one not unthreading?
What am I missing? What am I missing here? Is there a nylon lock nut inside of the extrusion? Oh, is that why you're saying it needs to come off? Hey, what's up, Bruno? Um, uh, loose the wheels in there as well, and you can take off the axis. Okay, so we are going to loosen. Oh, there's a lock nut inside. Gotcha, okay. Okay, so let's switch over. So we're going over to this side for a moment here. Go like this. Are we still not loose enough? Maybe. Maybe I need to remove one of the bolts fully. Or this bracket. So on this bracket though, the thing I'm confused about is how do I access the nylon lock nut? So it passes through, bolts is in here. I don't see how I don't see how I access that. It's throwing me off. Hey, what's up, Jose? Andrew, hey, what's up, Andrew? Gotcha, so it changes up everything because of that. So at this point, do I take off the top extrusion so I can just slide the entire thing off? That feels like that might be... We're going to break this apart a little bit more. So Ender 3 V2, which I thought uh, <laughs> I thought would be a good idea, uh, seems like it definitely has a bit more complications uh, because Creality changed things up with it. Uh, Take the whole axis off, the two small and three. Okay, so don't take it off top, you're saying. Oh, yeah, I see the bolts. Okay, so this entire thing needs to come off. So I think I do need to take this off the top. So let's undo these screws. Uh, I'm not doing linear rails. Uh, I mean, I might eventually because we've determined that since this V2 has been sitting for a while and um, hold on, multitasking is tough. Like I'm thinking about what I'm doing here and trying to answer uh, la, la, la. Yeah, since the V2 has sat for a while, the roller wheels on this might have dents in them or, or flat spots. And so if that's the case, I don't know that I foresee myself um, wanting to add new roller wheels. I might at that point go with linear rails. Okay, so sliding this guy up and off. Okay, and so we need to, yes. Now this makes sense to me. It was not making That's sense for a moment. You do a great job. Hey, Anonymous, thank you for the 420. Have a coffee on me, you do a great job. Thank you. Aaron brought home coffee yesterday um, from uh, Dutch Bros, and it was a large golden eagle, uh, and I never get a large coffee. And I it was, I hopped on the bike last night at, uh, hopped on the bike last night at like nine o'clock because I was sitting there and I was like, I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so much caffeine. So if I do a coffee, I will do a, uh, I'll do a small coffee. Okay, so we got one bolt off. Hey, this is good to know though, Kevin, because uh, I mean, there are going to be people with V2s that want to do this mod as well. So if it's a little bit more involved, it's definitely good to have that, you know, to know that. 
All right, bolt coming out. There we go. There's our troublemaker. Uh, <laughs> so this is the. Uh, that's a yeah. That's a morning coffee. She brought it when she got she got home from work at like uh, I think like four thirty. And so that was a it was an afternoon coffee. So by eight o'clock, I was still feeling like a psycho. I also am not a regular coffee drinker. Um, I would say I do coffee once every week to two, maybe. Um, so, oops. Uh, since you remove the plate, check for the flat spots on the wheels. Is there a good method, or just fill them with my hands? I don't feel any. I don't feel any flat spots. Visually, they look okay as well. Oh, these guys, I guess, right? Ooh, there might there might be flat spots. Unless that's I don't know. It actually could be something on my desk. Against the light, it's reflective. Okay. Mm, they look. They look. Uh, uh. I mean, it looks like more of a tiny scratch on this one. Let's see. There's tiny, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this on camera. Um, this is all I'm seeing on, on them is, see that tiny, there you go, you can see the light. That's the only thing I'm seeing, like the only imperfection on them. And it definitely does have a bit of texture. We think that's problematic? I've, I've actually never, uh, whenever the wheels are bad or like, I like sometimes the bed after a while will make it where even if you tighten the eccentric nut, it still has some play and so, I'll usually just take them off and swap them, but I haven't actually visually inspected them. There definitely is little, uh, little creases on them. A crack was not expected. Okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. All right, back to this troublemaker. Try not to drop things. That's more of, that's like probably my biggest concern is not dropping stuff. Okay. So this plate we are done with, right? We don't want this plate anymore. Let's see. First you remove the old plate with the lead screw nut. To get the M5 nuts uh, more easily, you can first dismantle the extruder. We'll need it again. Okay, so we don't need African bones. We're good. Now it's time to rotate. Uh, I'm gonna throw this on the ground for now. I don't think we need any more. Okay, so now it wants us to rotate this. Let's see, so it was facing like that and it wants us to just pivot it to the outside. Okay, trying to position this as good as I possibly can. There we go. All right, so we are going to move this. So we'll peel this QR code. Where does the QR code take you? Just creality.com or like a guide of sorts? I don't know that I've ever scanned it. All right, sticker's coming off. I oh, know, sorry sticker. I'll have to make another cool custom sticker. Maybe I'll make like one that uh, I can use it in videos and it, I don't know, takes you to like the subscribe button or merch or something, <laughs> like an Easter egg. Okay, so a little hair on the driver. So now we are going to loosen these four bolts. Ugh. Huh, weird. Now let's have dinner. 
<laughs> okay. So it looks like, again, we're just taking it and we're rotating it. Loosen and remove the four screws underneath the sticker. Rotate the motor 90 degrees so the connector is facing the, the left. Wait. So the connector is facing the left. Oh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're facing. Gotcha. It's all about perspective. So now, oops, dropped that. Uh, so we want it facing outside like this. I don't know if I got, uh... One second, I wanna try to get the belt back around this. There we go. Okay, so we've got this rotated. Probably would be easier to. So, do I need to reinstall it first? Let's see. Loosen your belt tension if needed. Yeah. Uh, looking like a fun. Okay. Yeah. It's it's it is fun. The um, guide is awesome. Yeah. Modbot cover would be super cool. I'm dying to get a vinyl cutter. And we were walking around uh, Michael's yesterday. Uh, Aaron and I looking at like fall and Halloween stuff. And I was like, I've been dying to get a vinyl cutter. Okay. Um, Cool, so just loosening screws. So is there any reason, is there any reason why I cannot install, I'm trying to think of order of operations. No, I shouldn't install the bar yet until we've installed those screws again. Okay, all right. We'll get this, we will get this. Where's the driver? Okay, I'm trying to line up the motor now. And I'm failing, it seems. Let's see. Again, this would be, I could see how this would be easier if this was not something you had to do, like take off the bar, but it's still not terrible. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, this is way nicer to do with the axis on the printer. This is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was gonna say, if the um, if this was still on the printer, then I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be, Oops, this belt needs to come out from underneath the bolt. Come on, guy. Um, it would be much easier because it'd be less flimsy. Yeah, totally. No, I, I gather that this is a unique situation because of the V2 and the way that Creality decided to route things. So, I'm trying to get it. Why are you not biting on the belt? Okay, so those bolts are kind of in. That bolt is kind of in. Why is this one being a jerk? All right, we got it. Okay. Whew, I'm sweating. I probably should have turned the air on. So sweaty, sweaty finger, finger stream is what this is. <laughs> All right. So motor's been rotated. I'm gonna take a two second breather after this just to drink some water. But yeah, no, I totally get what you're saying, Kevin. If this was not, if this was still in the frame, this wouldn't be pivoting like that as well. And it'd be much easier just to do a quick little rotate. Okay. Ooh. I'm glad I got a haircut because a little bit cooler. Uh, coming late today, but uh, I did this mod to my BQB1. Oh, nice. Yeah, so based off what I'm seeing so far, this mod should work for nearly any bed slinger that's got a 2040 profile right there. Right? I'm trying to think of what other things that are unique about like the printer. I would think if it's got 2040s and it's a bed slinger, it pretty much goes. Uh, babe, turn on the air, silly goose. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I'm gonna turn on the air. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. It says it's 70. I don't believe that. It feels hotter. You think it's 76 near Delilah? I don't think so, Mama. I think it's warmer. 
It's probably the bright light too. This light on my head, it definitely gives off heat. Okay, basically any i3 style with some modification. Okay, sweet. So, okay, so mounting left plate. So at this point, we should be able to put the plate back on. Uh, again, we're gonna leave it off the printer completely off of these Z uh, extrusions until we've got everything. Uh, new printer gets more and more smooth profiles like the S1, which is problematic to mount things. Oh, I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the S1 somewhere over here, but I get what you're saying. They don't have open slots. Okay, uh, let's see, install, uh, secure it with the M5 nuts you removed, reinstall the, okay. So we're just gonna be using the exact same nuts here. And the, let's see, so this is gonna be, looks like this guy. Okay, so. All right, let's go back to side profile. Uh, let's do, so five minute warning on the, on the uh, giveaway. So if you have not, uh, the form in the chat description is for a spool polymaker filament with global shipping. Um, and we are going to draw a winner in T minus like four minutes now. So if you have not filled it out, do so. Let's see how many people have entered in so far. 67 responses so far. And there are 75 to 79. That's pretty good. Okay. So thinking out loud here. So, okay, so now bolts are on this side, which should be, brain farting here a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting it in differently then. I'm gonna return it, let's see. Okay, so from this side now, we are going to do it differently. We're gonna do it like the correct way. There shouldn't be any issues with that, I don't think, right, Kevin? Cause these have nuts on this side, so let's try it. Uh, let's see, so all the bolts are the same size. So we're gonna go bolt through. Um, <clears throat> so what is it? It's bolt, then washer. T-nut must be on the inside then. Right, yeah, there's only one, so it's gotta be on the inside, so. Okay, so we got spacer, then we've got roller wheel, then we've got one more spacer. I think I'm gonna try to do top and bottom at the same time. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, just put the head under the profile, okay. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom. So, bolt on bottom, then washer. Let me see, be nice to ride it. Oh no! Let's say it'd be nice to ride another set of hands. Maybe we'll just do one at a time. Yeah, let's try one at a time. Roller wheel. This guy. Now this guy like this. And then lock nut. And then we're just gonna get this started. I don't wanna fully tighten it right this second. Um, also, let me zoom out. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit of what's going on. Not enough hands. <laughs> yeah, I know, I need more hands. Okay. Well, I guess we did kind of tighten it all the way, but that's fine. Okay, so now we are going to do the bottom side. And it's going to be the same thing on this side. So we are just going to do... I'm wondering what the easiest way to do this is. Maybe if I just go... So bolt. Roller wheel. And one more spacer. Did I lose a spacer? Don't tell me I lost a spacer. 
No, okay, I didn't. Yeah. Definitely a moment we're having another set of hands. Okay, I got this, I got this. Looks a little bit out of focus, sorry. I will correct it as soon as I get this part through. There we go. There we go, we did it! Awesome. Okay, so. Again, sorry, it's a little bit out of focus, guys. It's tough, it's tough to get all the, all the beautiful angles. Okay, uh, let's, maybe you should hang the gantry on the uh, frame while doing this. Pay attention to the orientation of the eccentric on the inside, okay. Okay, let's do a quick, quick little break to do this giveaway. Um, here, let me see, I'm gonna unpin this from chat and then we'll get back into this. Uh, unpin message, we're just gonna remove message. Let me really quick here grab everybody's names. There's, oh, 78 responses, it shot up in the end. Okay, so copy copy everyone's name. The reason why I'm not putting it back on, why am I not putting it back on? I think because it's going to be tricky if I put it back on to get that third one in on the inside since I took it off to access it in the first place. I think that I think that I have logic, uh, I think that's my logic. Uh, I don't know if I'm correct, but I'm kind of like doing it exactly the opposite of what I did when I removed it, which was I had it off for that, so. All right. Also, screw the metal plate back to the X-beam first. Um, the plate needs to go back on the X-beam, but I need, to, I need to put the, I need to do the third bolt. Hold on, all right, <laughs> let's do this first. All right, so we are gonna copy and paste everybody's names. There should be 78 people. Yes, I love when I copy and paste it and the number actually matches. Uh, reinstall the inner M5 the other way around like it is right now, just so you have the head. Oh! Oh! Gotcha. Okay, so you're saying don't have it go back in the way that it was. Have them so they're all the correct way, so that the, the nuts are all facing outward. Okay. Okay. All right, we've got 78 people on our magic wheel. Uh, for anyone that's new here, I know there's definitely some new faces, which is exciting. We do a, a, we stream every Wednesday at the same time, which is noon Pacific Standard Time. And Polymaker has uh, gifted us with a spool every single week. So no matter who you are, or where you are in the world, uh, you are eligible. And after the stream ends tonight, I will contact the winner with a uh, simple form. You fill out what you want. It's good for all PLA, ABS, ASA, and PTG, except for exotic, so no carbon fiber or crazy insane stuff but like all standard colors are game and they will uh polymaker will ship it which is awesome um all the filament here is polymakers so on that note uh let's shuffle it a couple of times good luck to everybody ultim yeah <laughs> it's like huh polymaker out of business why they were giving away ultim every week okay five four three two good luck everybody one Chris Campbell, you are the winner. That is the new name, I think. I don't recall seeing Chris Campbell in. Congratulations, Chris. Uh, our, our usual, a little bit of confetti falling down for you. Just standing. Congratulations. Uh, so I will send you an email later on today and uh, you will get a spool of material. So if you've got a project coming up or just want another spool, you can never have too much uh, printer. There he is, Chris Campbell. Uh, you will never have, you can never have too much material. So, congratulations. Awesome. Also, I'm gonna be scheduling the one year stream anniversary stream in the next week here. So stay tuned for that. It'll be on a Wednesday, same time, probably around October 20th, something that week, the 20th. So after Earth and after my parents are gone, uh, we will do that. So more info on that, but that's what I've got for now for everybody. Okay, so back to the build. Um, okay, so to go with what Kevin and uh, everyone was saying, let's see, side cam. Okay, so it sounds like we're saying instead of doing, come on, guy. Okay. Oh, we lost our belt. That's fine. 
We actually don't we don't need the belt in right now. Why don't we just add that later? Yeah, your belt. Okay. So instead of having it where the nut is on the inside like it was, which is what caused this whole debacle, uh, we're gonna have the nut on the outside. It sounds like that's what we want. Um, and as far as orientation goes, we are going to go bolts. Let's see, the eccentric nuts are on the back side of the rail. So this is the side. Okay, so we're going bolt, and then we're going Trying to, trying to go. Uh, roller wheel. Actually, do we need the eccentric nut to go into that? Is that what that, is that what that channel's for? This, uh, I mean, this channel right here looks like, since it's not nut shaped, I'm wondering if that's for our friend here. That's totally what it's for. This is exactly what it's for. Okay, cool. All right, so now we've got roller wheel. Okay, and we're gonna try to do our best with the two hands that we've been given. Oh man, it's gonna be a little bit tight. Um, okay, new plan. Okay, so we're gonna shove the eccentric nut from the bottom side into that cavity. I think the fit is tight enough. Oh, dude, gravity. Gravity is the name of the game. Ooh, we can do it, I believe. Oh, yes. Yes, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Um, and if you have an ERC app, it changes the game even more. Screw the import. Oh no, screw the M4 in first. You did say that, didn't you? Um, oh, you're saying like before all of this, the M4 needs to go in, huh? There's no, there's no pocket holes. So we have to undo this. That's what you're saying. Yeah, there's, there's no way to remount this. That's gotta be what you're saying. You know, it all makes sense. Yeah, because in the, in this guy, so this is the difference. I'm gonna show it so that way anyone that follows this after gets it. I used my feet to pick it up. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, so yeah, on the stock piece, you've got two holes, basically. So that allows you to get these bolts down here. In this instance, we don't have that. So yeah, it's gotta be what happens. <laughs> All right, so this is coming off. Uh, we have to undo this, right? Everyone in the green, in the bed, we'll watch the stream tomorrow. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Zarent. I know it's late there. That's what you're saying, right, Kev, is that I've got to remove all of this, basically, because of those two bolts? I'm unscrewing things, but I'm waiting for a confirmation. I think that's what he's saying. I don't see how else it would screw on, so that's probably right. And I did see you say that earlier, I just didn't, it didn't click in my head until now. Screen wall. I'm not seeing feedback, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, yes, you need to mount the plate first. Back to the okay, cool. Zaren confirmed before he goes to bed. We will get it. All right. Everything's coming off. Okay, and then let's make sure you mount it correctly. So this guy needs to be facing forward. And these bolts. Okay, so the one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the screw. So this bolt that's going in here needs to go in like this as we install this. Now it makes sense. Everything, everything makes sense now. All right, and then we're gonna use these two, these two bolts. Uh, naturally, we'll stay. This basically to be. 
Oh, I'll stick with Roy. Yes, the metal plate has to be on there. He's nuts. Yeah, I know. I figured, I thought Kevin was in the same, same section of the world, so it's definitely, no worries. I mean, I'm sure we're going to figure it out. Okay, this is too small. Uh, you must be the right one. There we go. Okay. And somehow it looks like I lost a, it looks like I lost one of these little washers for this guy. Unless it just didn't have it in the first place. Um, I think it's gonna be okay, hopefully. Uh, build, build's going good. The main hurdles have really been just because it's the V2, I guess Crowley did the orientation of the screws differently and it makes it uh, definitely a bit more challenging. Like, I, I mean, I would, don't know if I'd even say more challenging, but it makes it a bit more involved or like uh, there's a few more things you gotta do. But it's, it's going. We're making progress, little by little, piece by piece. Um, let's see. Okay, so I think I'm gonna try to get this one installed at the same time. So here we're going washer, roller wheel, centric nut facing that way, bada boom, bada boom, like so. Lock nut goes on the end. Can't leave you alone just for a minute. <laughs> I need adult supervision, Zara. You can't go to sleep. <laughs> uh, is this bolt... Uh, the next question is, is this bolt long enough? So if I go... Oh, uh, where'd that driver go? This guy. So if we push this up, is this bolt actually long enough? The answer is yes. Yes, it is. Cool. Okay, we'll need to tighten those more in a bit, but for now I'm just kind of trying to get everything in place. Sweet. All right, last one. So we are going bolt. <laughs> I can, I can sleep with. Check both messages. Is the plate flat on top? Is the plate flat on top of the shoe? Check that the plate is flat on top of the shoe. I don't know. I don't know what she means there. I'm hoping that whatever you're asking the answer is yes, that it's flat. All right, cool, we got it. That was the last one. Bolt's gone through. Threading this guy in. I'm in the US, so I'll be here for a while. Uh, I built this just a few times. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it's 320 here. I was thinking that it would be like, yeah, we can probably knock this out pretty quick, but I I kind of went into it blind, so that was uh, not with a whole lot of knowledge on how long it takes. Okay, so I need to tighten those a bit more, but I really quickly want to see install it. On the right side, you have to remove the inner Interesting, so, so you unscrew, okay, so we're going to be removing, we're going to be removing the other side as well, which is fine. Okay, so let's tighten up this side. <clears throat> the metal plate is at the top, the metal plate is at the top side, should be flat on the top side of the tree. I don't know what metal plate. I agree. Usually by the time I've troubleshooted, troubleshoot, troubleshooted, um, you know, a mod quite a few times, I'm like, I feel like I'm a pro at this point.
It definitely makes it easier to explain it to someone else after you've, you know, done some troubleshooting on it. Why is this bolt going in? My goose, no. Oh, it's bending. No, it's not. Okay, I think we're good on that. It's weird, the bottom one did go in a lot further, which makes me wonder if it did bend a little bit? I don't know, we'll see. If I have to loosen it later, I'll loosen it, but for right now, it seems fine. <laughs> That's true. Every time I go outside, Aaron's like, yeah, the plate, the plate looks like it's mounted flat against the extrusion. Yes. It does. Yes. So you're just talking about the black one, the plate that holds the M4 is the inner top plate. The inner flat top area should align with the X-beam. Yeah, it does. It does align. You're scaring me. Okay. So now, we're taking off everything again on the other side. Let me move this stuff this way. So we can focus on this. I'm also gonna push this in a little bit so it can see a little bit easier. The top nut is not aligned correctly. Oh. Yep. Yep, you're absolutely right. Cool. Good, good, good eyes. And now it goes in much further. Cool, so it wasn't bending. It was just that I had one seated correctly. Thank you. Uh, if you feel the top side is flat and there's no bump between the extrusion and the plate. Yeah, yeah, no, we're good, we're good. There's no bump. <laughs> Why would there be a bump? Are you saying that they like, at factory sometimes are, are screwed up? All right. Let's move this like this. So now we're gonna take off. Am I wrong in saying that we need to take off this entire plate? I believe we do. It looks like everything comes off, it rotates, then you install. Place the inner M5 by 30 screw. There's play, there's play in the middle. Gotcha. Okay, oh, you guys can't see this because I'm in the way. So on this side, we're taking off the entire thing. And it looks like, oh, okay, so this screw is getting replaced with a longer screw. That's what it's saying then. So it pivots, bolt comes out, longer bolt comes in, and it pivots back, okay. Wait, what is throwing me off here? So all of the... Let's see. 
Hey, what's up, Viking? Okay, why are you able to replace the inner M30 with M40? I do see that. First, remove all three roller assemblies. Note the orientation of the eccentric nut. The thicker end needs to be placed back into the metal plate later. Okay. Um, it looks like all the bolts. Also, insert the two new M540. Okay, okay, yeah. So they're all getting replaced. That's what was throwing me off. I was going to say, it looks like they all need to get replaced. That's right. Okay. All right, I think I get it. I think I'm slightly confident that I've got it. Okay, so let's start off by removing these guys. So one here. Zeron says check Discord. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we're good then. Yeah, it's flush. The top is flush. Uh, on this one, I can... I'm trying to think. On this one, can I do it with it on the frame? Okay, so on this one, it's nuts on the back side. This one I can do while, the, while the, with it being on the frame. Yeah, I don't see any reason why I can't. So let's put it back on the frame. It looks like the orientation's only funky on the other side, so we should be fine on this side. Okay. Thinking here for a second. So we are going to remove this guy next. Have a good night's sleep. <laughs> nice, there, huh? Okay, bolts here, bolts here. And this is all getting replaced. So. That's off. Popping out this, put it all in one place. Sorry, chat, I can't see you guys, you're so far away. <laughs> once I have the once I have the TV mounted I'll be able to just look forward which will be really nice all right and the final one right here we did it ah okay Wheel centric nut. Okay, so this pivots just like, <laughs> and you drop it. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, let me get it. Okay, Woo. you also have to replace the inner M5 through. Okay, 69 watching, nice. Okay, so now we are swapping out all M530s for M540s. And now let's make sure uh, M540s are the biggest ones in here. So we got these guys. Let's reuse.
How come? Oh. Okay, is there any reason why we cannot use socket heads? Oh no, I have them right here. Okay, never mind. Let's use their cracked ones. And five by forties. I'm going to do some other things that need to be done. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. <laughs> Good luck with the things. All right. So we are swapping these silver guys, which are M5 by 30s for M5 by 40s, because we're going to be installing the new printed brackets. This all makes sense. Uh, this guy, I wasn't so orientation. Let's see. So this guy goes like this. That seems right. And then this bolt. Cool. So this bolt goes through here and this drops back in place like that. Okay. So now at this point I should be able to just reinstall those uh, bolts we took out. So let's take these two smaller screws, which I think are M4s. Let's install this back in place. Um, Will I be able to find, will I be able to find the thread? I did. Yay. Awesome. All right. You guys can see kind of, right? Like, yeah, it looks like you can. Okay. I think that's fine. I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to have these back on. Okay, so now we're gonna take our other printed part and we're going to install this. It looks like there's also, let's see, so how are these on? These were bolt, eccentric nut. Wait, something's throwing me off here. So on this side. Okay, so this side it goes bolt. Wait a second. Bolt, then V roller, then washer. Wait, do we need extra washers? Oh, that's what the printed ones are for, right? Is that, is that, that must be it then. That must be it then. So there's printed washers. Does it say that? Let's see. I'm sure it says it in this paragraph. Also make sure that the metal plate, okay, yes, the printed one. Uh, make sure the metal plate lines up like Zerant showed you. Okay. Oh. Oh, I, okay, now I get it. You're just saying when you retighten it, there's play. So that way, all right. It's kind of one of those things you have to see, seeing is believing. Yeah, so this one, I get it. Now this one wasn't fully aligned. Okay, I think I can, let me just explain this. So that way anyone that watches this later. All right, so what Zarent was, was explaining to me, and I thought he was saying like at a factory, that it would be bent. And I was like, how would it be bent if the machine was being used? When you reinstall these aluminum plates onto this extrusion, there's actual slop to it. So like, if you look at it, I don't know how well you can see that, but yeah, there's movement, there's motion. And so when you reinstall it, you wanna make sure that it's flush with the top of this extrusion. How, how he was saying it makes total sense now. I just needed a visual. And now that I see it in front of me, I totally get it. So if you just kind of hold it tight, you can help to make sure that it's lined up with that extrusion. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, I feel like if if Zerant was here physically and was able to just point at it, I'd be like, ah, I get it. But the text to image in my head that it was creating, I just wasn't understanding. I was like, why would there be, why would the metal be bent? Like, <laughs> what have I done in this build that would make you think I've bent it? So, okay, I get it. Other sides are already good. I did check, uh, I did check that side. Zerant sent me an image in Discord that just kind of showed him and it made sense. Okay, cool. I get it. Yay. All right. Quick little 
Ugh, it is warm after <laughs> two and a half hours. It should be easy for somebody who built the boron. Yeah, I wouldn't say this build's been difficult at all. It's more just like doing the thing and also like um, going in blind in a sense. Like it's just different. But I wouldn't say the build's been difficult. Uh, I wouldn't say it at all. To be fair, I already made a note for that, but it seems like I haven't imported the guide yet. This will be fixed too. No worries. I feel like this is great uh, like feedback for the build from like a live specimen. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So the blue must be, oh, that's why it's showing it. So the brew, the brew, the blue is the printed, the printed parts. This is all making a lot more sense to me now. So eccentric nut. Cool. All right. So it looks like eccentric nut for this one. We actually want going into that direction. So let's go back. Oh, we're already on side cam. So eccentric nut seems to me like it feeds into that. That looks absolutely correct. And then we've got roller wheel that goes on next, like so. Um, hopefully we can get in there, there we go. <clears throat> and then printed spacer, like so. And then this guy, uh, like that. But we're gonna wait a second, because I want to, it's easier if I do two of them at a time. So for this one, we'll go, uh, you go through there, and then we're going with the included spacer, followed by roller wheel, like that, easy peasy, right? Um, and then we go printed spacer, like, oops. Ooh, I think that I've got, yeah, some elephant's foot. <laughs> ah, no! Oh gosh, all right, the other side fell. That's all right, we'll get it back. Bear with me. Don't fall, please. I know that's a vertical angle and I'm asking a lot. Can't see chat for a second, everybody. Okay. I think we're good on that. Now we will place these two, like so, one second. Oh, come on, why aren't you going? Interesting. Okay, so. Sweet. All right, so now we're gonna take our lock nuts. Uh, you're right, I should've just put a temporary nut. Uh, just a learning process. Yeah, just a learning process, exactly. The dealing with the chirality aspect is the largest variable. Yeah, I wouldn't say any of this has been a difficult build. Uh, again, the main thing was um, that again, the V2 chirality like made it where it's impossible to access access the part you need while it's on the rail, so you have to disassemble the entire thing. So, which is just more of a, um, makes it a little bit more tedious. Okay, so this time we're gonna align the nut with the nut trap, like so. Okay, we'll tighten it a bit more in a minute, and then let's grab another lock nut. It goes right here. Wait. Uh-oh, why can't I find? Interesting, what did I do? Hold on. <clears throat> For some reason I can't feel the screw head. There we go. Okay, cool. So we got that one started. I don't want to fully tighten it. Let's grab, coming around to this side for a sec. Let's grab the last one. It's gonna be the exact same way. Hopefully I have, yeah. I was like, I knew I printed extra washers. Uh, 
Okay, so last one is going like so. We got metal washer or metal spacer. Then we've got roller wheel. Come on, guy. Like that. And then printed spacer. Like that. And hopefully this will align. Oh, I need to get the there's the roller wheel. Huh, why are you being a jerk? I wonder if I tightened it too much so I don't have enough slot to line this last one up. We're very, very close, but... Um... We are so close, come on, dude. Oh, we did it, all right. All right, coming around, coming around the other side. All we need to do is add an Allen lock nut, tighten it up. Whew, adjust the eccentric nut. Yeah, I'm sure that would have given me more slop. All right, so let's tighten the bottom one. We'll lock all this in. Okay. Okay, that one's in the nut trap. Interesting, that one went in way further. Why? All right, that seems plenty. And then the final one, a little bit tougher to grab. All right, I think that's plenty good right now. If we need to adjust it later, we can. <clears throat> top, wait, top nut isn't right. It is now, right? Oh no, it's not. <laughs> what the? Uh... No, it seems like it's not moving, but yeah, you're right. It's <laughs> shifted. <laughs> Come on, guy. Let's see if I can pinch it and straighten it. Oh, come on. And this one really doesn't want to move. I think I do need to adjust the eccentric nut. Uh, do I have a little wrench somewhere? Come on, there we go, a little bit of slop. I think that when I pulled it, it uh, I just... All right, <laughs> it's trying to make me mad. There we go. There you go, buddy. Wasn't so hard. All right. We did it. Actually feels pretty tight. I'm gonna leave it as is for now. Okay, thank you for the call out on the nut. <laughs> All right, we did it. 
No, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We gotta do it right. Okay. All right, y'all. So we did that. Oh, sick. Hey. Let's go. Okay, so now I'm assuming we can put the top back on the printer. That is a dusty top. All right, because we only took these off because of that funky thing. So I think we can place these back on for right now. And then we'll move on to the next thing. Great news, uh, with, uh, with this you completed the most time consuming part. Heck yeah. Give yourself a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious if we put up a, uh, like a board, like a reward board and, oh no, I popped the set off. And, uh, whenever we do like a mod successfully, <laughs> we add a star to it. <laughs> That's freaking funny. All right. Awesome. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, again, I get I get that it was tedious and it makes it where the instructions aren't exact because of the angle. Uh, but as there's, I don't see any way, there's nothing you could do differently, you know? It's just, it's just the way the, what is these Ace uh, the way the cookie crumbles? Is it, that's not Ace Ventura, is it? Bruce Almighty, Evan Almighty? I think it's Bruce Almighty. That's the way the cookie crumbles. All right. Yeehaw. Cap goes back on like this. Maybe. There we go. Bruce. All right. Yeah, Bruce is the first one. Bruce Almighty. Evan Almighty is with Steve Carell. And he builds Noah's Ark, basically. Okay. All right. Let's take a quick second here to enjoy some delicious curl mix. Oh, that makes sense. The end cap's gonna come off. Okay. Okay, so we built that. We built that. These are installed. We got these little guys down here. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. This looks cool. <clears throat> Thank you. Ah, oh, stomach is amazing. Mmm. It should be the F six two three. This, that's the 20T, right? It looks like it has the wrong... It's gonna be similar though, right? I think the only difference is instead of using, like taking the sides off, I'm just gonna use the bearings. the printer right now or no no i'm gonna move the printer for a sec so we have a better camera angle <clears throat> the purple looks nice all right so i believe that the key difference is between the one i've got and what's here is that we're using these four bearings instead the sides are staying on um we need those pins right uh, where are the pins 
Where are the pins? Oh, here they are. Okay. Pins, I believe we need. And then two printed parts, one U, one U. And then we're gonna use probably the same M, yeah, M for M4, our friends, one of their T nuts. And I think that's it. Uh, what filament? This is Polylite. Um, Polylite Purple ABS. Yeah, so I believe the only difference is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, either Kevin or Guffy, is that we're going to be using these, the the belts are going to ride on these. So basically, we'll take the take the pin, try not to lose them. So pin, we've got the flanged edge towards the outside, flanged edge, to flanged edge towards the outside because words are tough. And then I believe it's just gonna pop in, pop into the back of this printer part. Like, like this, and then, does it snap in or does it loose it? Is it just a loose, uh, it probably just, No, it looks like it needs to snap in. Um, make sure the pin snaps in. Okay, it will snap, okay. Uh, it's not snapping. <laughs> I don't wanna break it. Uh, all right, let's try it again. Oh, shit. It is not snapping. Hmm. Oh, that's a lot of force. Let's try the other side. <laughs> it's another uh, M3 nut situation from earlier. I've got the mallet. I'd rather not mallet bearings, since they can definitely be damaged fairly easily. Let's try the other printed part. It slides in nicely initially. God, oh, that was a lot of force. Um, uh, I could take a. Oh, okay, I got one in. Two in. Wow. Yeah, that's a, uh, um, <laughs> that worked. <laughs> very satisfying, <laughs> very satisfying click. Uh, highly recommend using a tool though. That is not super fun for your thumbs. Um, so I'm just gonna go the same thing, like left side. Yeah, that ain't coming out in a hurry. And the other side. There we go. Yeah, well, definitely snap fit. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I mean, they're really weak or these parts are really strong. <laughs> All right, well, again, not a big deal. Just, I would certainly say, uh, if you can't get it easily with your fingers, just to use some kind of a tool. And then, <clears throat> more sat yeah, definitely more satisfying than the flange that came off with little effort. Okay, so now we got one, two, three, four, five. We need six, seven, eight, two, four, six. Yep, I can count. One, two, three, four, five, oh, two, four, six, seven, eight. All right. Yeah, that's, I mean, it works. It feels like, I don't think that's going anywhere. Uh, inside out, oh. Yeah, I don't think that's going anywhere. So the snap fit definitely works. All right, let's quickly get these in. These are easier. You can just use your hands to quickly thread them twice. That was, that was a lot of force. I mean, looking at the, uh, 
Looking at the socket it popped into, it didn't look like it would require that much force. That was nuts. Alright. Oh, huh, I guess I can't count. There's clearly an extra an extra T nut. These are so much easier than the other ones where they're inside of the little channels. Definitely a fan of the installing them on these pieces. All right. <clears throat> All right, record time. <clears throat> yeah, I could, I mean, again, uh, it's kind of, yeah. luckily they're printed parts. Like, so I knew that if I broke them, granted, I don't know if I'd be able to get them cranked out on stream again, but I was like, oh, worst comes to worst, it cracks and I have to pause it. Um, the bamboo, I, I I'm, shouldn't have done what I did. The end of the filament had a little bit of a blob on it, the line, and I was like, ah, I'll just feed it, it'll be fine, it's not that bad. And so it fed into the um, hot ender extruder, no problem, touched the sensor, and then when it was backing out, the blob snagged on something and broke off in the extruder. So now I get to disassemble the bamboo, the X1 Carbon's tool head, which uh, I'm not super stoked on. It's a very compact assembly, which is nice, but doesn't make it the most fun when you gotta take out the hot end, take out the extruder, careful with the small PCB, like it's just, it's a bit, it's a bit of like, uh, I feel like you're playing operation. Yeah, it was my fault, totally my fault. Um, okay, let's see here. 85 likes. If you have not hit the like button, please do. It'd be awesome if we could hit 100 likes. It'd be absolutely amazing. Appreciate your faces. Okay, um, what are we doing now? Okay, I think that's everything as far as the... Let's go back here. Okay, so we did the thing there. We did that, we did that. Yes, we did that. We just finished that. Clipper config. This is the end of this page at the beginning of your journey. Where? Build instructions. This picture shows the build is loaded. Um, instructions will open in a new tab. Chat gets 100 gold stars. All the gold stars. I'll even get scratch and sniff stickers. I'll go out of my way and find them. Personal favorite. Click the rod. Oh, this guy? Top assembly and buttons. Oh, how did I not see that? Thank you. <laughs> it's one of those like hidden in plain sight moments. Okay, the installation of the belt is identical for both a direct drive. For better illustration, I've used the direct drive plates, but the installation is identical for both. Top assembly, awesome sauce. Let's do this. I'm excited. It's always fun to watch like Watch everything come kind of tenfold, come around. Uh, all right. You found <laughs> Waldo. Mm. Okay. The installation of the top part is pretty straightforward. If you've already installed the M5 uh, by 18, as we did, you can simply slide the parts on from the side. Position from the transmission is not important for aesthetics. I always place it in the center, simply. Okay, cool, so the first thing we're doing is basically just attach all three things. Transmission, try to get centered, kind of. And this looks like it is from the back view of the printer. Cool, all right. Uh, so we're looking at the back side of the printer and we are going to, I guess, just start, start with any, uh, start with this side. This looks like a good side to start with. Um, Okay, so caps are going on the end. I'm trying to think actually a little bit here. So this one has to go on this side. And okay, so yeah, caps come off. Boom. And then this guy is just going to slide. Uh, 
Okay, so this guy is going to slide, it looks like, like, try to align the T-notes as best as I can. Wait, that doesn't seem right. I'm screwing up, I'm screwing up. This guy goes on this side. Like this. Come on, nuts. There we go. Oh. Other sides. Come on, guy. There we go. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's in place. Uh, like so. Then end cap is going to be looking the same way. So this guy is just going to go on like this. We lost a little bit of ABS in the process. That's fine. The extrusions are sharp. Oh man. The trickiest part is getting these nuts lined up. Um, like so. Okay, and so these look like they just butt up against each other, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go ahead and tighten that in place. A little tip, to keep the nuts in the right orientation, just screw them down. Oh, tighten them all the way so that way you get them. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's funny because I've used T-nuts a ton in builds. Um, and normally I just keep them loose like that and just sort of fight with them. Okay, so I'm gonna come around like this. Let's see, what time is it? Erin's gonna be home. Oh no, she's getting, making lasagna. So she's gonna get the lasagna stuff. Okay, so go like this. can see that the T-nuts are spinning. That looks good. Actually, no, it doesn't look super good. There we go. Uh, and this one I can't see, but I've got, I've got faith it's gonna spin. All right, let's not overly tighten these. We'll just hand tighten them, but make sure they're nice and snug. One down, awesome. Uh, T-nuts are absolutely horrible. I love them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends. Um, so like, I mean, a roll of material, right? Like it's not a full roll by any means, but like, let's just say you have to buy a roll if you don't have a roll. So let's just say a cheap roll of like ABS is like 20 bucks roughly. And then the kit I think was like $35, so $55. And then if you have the hardware like nuts and bolts, it'll save you a lot of money because I did want to get a specific, like I wanted all black for all of them. Um, it cost me probably another 20, to 25 in hardware, so 80 ish dollars, I would say. Ooh, are we four away from. Uh... Wait, were you, were you guys able to see this while I was doing it? You guys were, right? I thought I had the camera on that. Uh, let's see. We are at. 97 likes, three more likes is all we need and you get a gold sticker star. I will get them after stream. We'll place it on the wall. Ninety nine likes. One more. I'm trying to get a seller for a screw kit but wasn't successful so far. If you can get one, that'd be awesome. Oh, I think mine takes a while to update. Gold star, heck yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to text Erin and ask when she gets the lasagna stuff if she can, oh, 103, ask if we can pick up some stickers as well for chat. <laughs> okay, all right, um, back to this. So next we need to slide this top piece on, which looks like it's gonna be facing this direction. Do I go with the smart way, which is what Kevin said, and align them 
tighten them beforehand or do I struggle? I think I'm just gonna sh struggle to take Kevin. <laughs> All right, so it goes like this, right? This is the correct orientation. Cap comes off like so. It's not, I don't think it'll be as bad in this direction, maybe. It's also very tight, which I'm sure is the ABS doing its shrink thing. There we go, there we go. Just gotta... There we go. Oh, you guys couldn't see that because I did the same thing again. 3D printed gold star, I should. I have to figure out, we gotta figure out some fun stuff, guys. We have a lot of fun here, but I gotta figure out more fun stuff. More fun stuff for everybody. Okay, so it says this can basically be, oh, that's not very, doesn't look very nice for everybody. There we go. So it says this can be anywhere roughly, but centered. Let's see. It's straightforward if you're already post, not for aesthetics, I always place in the center, but the position has no influence on the performance. After the transitions are on the top parts can be mounted. As a reminder, the top parts consist of two parts each but are shown as one part here. It is recommended not tighten the screws until the eight millimeter rod is installed. Okay. Remember to thread to Okay, I think we're okay. Um... So let's tighten this guy up. I want it centered kind of as well, okay? All right, I want it to be, I want it to look nice. You spend all this time like, you know, <laughs> I want it to look nice. It's like uh, if you have a cool sticker on your car, you get a couple more horsepower. If you have your printer looks nicer, you get, I heard like a, you can increase your acceleration by like another 10. <laughs> so it, it matters. Softly tighten these guys. Loosely tighten. It looks awesome. I mean, it is a very cool looking mod. All right, I think that's good. I don't know, I'm scared to crack it. Yeah. Let's tighten the back up a couple more. A couple more spins. Like so, and like so. Cool. Uh, ABS makes it fit a little tighter. All, uh, all parts have a 0 0.2 tolerance, which is pretty perfect. Uh, ABS string issue. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure of it. I mean, it still works fine. I, I bet you the ABS again, like if I had printed this on PTG, a lot of those things that were overnight, a lot of, um... oh, brain farting, I was reading chat. A lot of, the tight things that we installed, like popping it in, is probably much easier. The um, bearings, if you've got PTG and those M3 nuts. I heard a racing stripe. <laughs> I need to wear my Modbot shirt tonight. Yes, yes. All right, look at that. We've got a little, a little uh, battle scar. <laughs> Sorry, ABS. Okay, so now we've got that. Let's do the final, the final one. Well, that was way easier. Oh, hey oh. <laughs> it's like lean back. This should be in. <laughs> this guy. Oh no, that is it is in. All right. So it must be the other side that's being a jerk now. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Or maybe it's not now, it's just, I think it's just the ABS that's being a jerk. All right, Kevin, we're gonna do it your way. Tightening this, tightening these in, so that way we can position them how we want. We'll slide them in and loosen them. Okay. 
There we go. All right, now let's loosen them so that way we make sure that it actually spins. Like, almost completely remove it. Whoa. Oh no. Come on. I wonder if it's plastic they got in the threads. Weird. I don't know. No say. It's always the last one. It's always the last one. All right. Thank you. Gosh. This one's easier because I can see whether it rotates. Perfect. It's rotating. We're in. Good. Last guy right here. I can't see. Looks like we're rotating. I think we rotated. All right. Woo! Rolling nuts for the win. Yeah. Just put a hammer a little closer to the printer. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to threaten your printer a little bit, you know? Like, it's like a... Put the fear, <laughs> it's the fear of God into your printer. <laughs> Oops. Okay. All right, let's go back to the instructions. So, um, so we don't do anything with the belts yet, it looks like. But basically, we need this guy slides this slide in. Hold on. Okay, we did that. Okay, that drops in. And it looks like the wider portion faces inward. Cool. Cool, all the above, and then we probably tighten it as a last thing. Okay, let's do it. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do this and show you guys. There we go, can we zoom out a little? Oh, dude, I always forget that we're zoomed in. I'm like trying to work with a small space, and I just gotta zoom out. Okay, so we've got smooth rod check, a uh, little belt check, printed part here check, um, you and you check. And we said what the, ooh, one second, these are kind of loose. All right. Currently, uh, pretty parts. Oh, nice, you're doing a Mercury One. It's on my hit list of projects. That's super cool. Okay, we are going good. Is that all that goes in the middle, it looks like? It looks like that's it, just one of these guys, all right. So, wide portion on the inside, like so, like that. Oh, okay, so we're probably gonna need to center these at some point. Maybe we don't tighten them yet. I think that's what it said. Okay, then on this guy, are we gonna be able, yeah, we can tighten this after it looks like there's a channel. Um, so, you guys see, you guys are, oh my gosh. Are you see? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was screen sharing. Sorry about that, y'all. Cam swap, yeah. Okay, let's try it again. So, wider portion of this, like teeth side towards the outside, I guess, let's just say it like that. Then slides through bearing, slides through bearing. Aaron's home. They can see you. Say hi. <laughs> All right, uh, and then now we need, oh, I didn't really see this part, but it looks like um, bolt side out, like towards left side, belt goes on here, and then belt goes around, you guys can't see that, let's turn the camera, goes around the, uh, idler, so we're gonna go like this, we're gonna go like this, hopefully, does it not drop in this space, is it a tight fit, what am I doing wrong? No, I think that's, 
is it supposed to be able to is it supposed to be able to wiggle a little bit yeah it seems fine actually i think once this goes in excuse me why are you not aligning Ooh, look at, look at it go okay i'm not sure why it's not Okay, that is, we gotta, gotta reevaluate here what's going on. <clears throat> Pi says hi. Chat says hi. Oh, she, she's, she's gone. Okay, maybe if I just. Ah, it's so close. <laughs> I just want it to go. Uh, this won't be in touch. This one won't be in touch. Wait, what? Just if you have some trouble to insert the rod slightly, loosen the M5s again. Oh, gotcha. Okay, loosen the M5s on. Loosen the M5s on the uh, transmission, or on the uh, probably on the transmission, right? Because that's the one that it doesn't really matter exact location that's probably it then right it'll give it a little bit of give it a little bit of slop or a little bit of wiggle oh wow that's a tight fit on the um I am, <laughs> uh, it wasn't, um, that's funny. So it wasn't the actual alignment that was causing the issue. It's that the idler on this, the set screws are too tight. So it can't, it won't allow the smooth rod to pass through. So let's loosen that. That's the issue. Yeah, now it goes fine. Oh my gosh. Okay, now let's let's tighten this again. That was my bad. Dogs are so happy Aaron's home. They're like, Dad's boring. They just sleep all day when I'm here. All right, that looks good. Yeah, so loosen your, loosen the, um, set screws on the idler. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Guffy, are your grub screws in too? <laughs> oh. Guffy, tighten after you're all in on all rollers. Okay, so on this one, teeth on outside. Oh no, did I screw up by tightening again? No, there we go, we're good. Oh, so yeah, again, so I really gotta make sure these guys are loose. And we are in. Brought me a cookie? What kind of cookie? Oh, those are so good. Yeah. I can eat some sugar, please. Yeah. Thank you. Yum. Look at it. It's looking great, right? All this left. So we swapped out this, 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 and then the lead screw is gone. And so we're just basically just need to add belts to this, tension it, and then magic, <laughs> magic. It is, it is warm the Hot in here, right? Yeah, every time I stream, I'm like, dude, am I sweating or? I mean, it is me, but <laughs> I'm sweating. Thank you.
A nice cold beer. Surprise me, something light. Yeah, anything's fine. Thank you. How do you feel? Oh no. No. I'll be okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'll have some chips later. Thank you. Uh oh. Let's um, report user. It's a bot. There's always like sex bots that come. Bot. Yeah, chat69.xyz, best adult dating site. Hide user on this channel. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, go excuse me. Are you finished and printed a leveling test? Okay, cool. Thank you guys. Stupid bots. Okay, so now this is in place. Remember to thread uh, as well as the AT gear and the small belt blue. Better double check everything is installed. The ratio will have to disassemble it again. Once the rod is in place, you can tighten the M5 by 8 screws. Make sure you do not tighten the grub screws yet. Um, let's get another water. Don't throw it, don't throw it. Don't th if it hits the table, I'm gonna be so sad and everything goes over. Thank you. All right, love you. Okay. <clears throat> I can't actually see what you guys can see right now. Do you guys see me or do you guys see? Okay, right here. Okay. Don't tighten anything. It says route the belt, uh, right? The installation of the belts require a little more attention. Start by writing the belt as shown in the two pictures. The belt is colored in red. For clarity, uh, hover over the image. The belt is rounded around the top of the 20 behind the plastic plates in around the two caution. It's very important that both belts have the exact, whoa, whoa, whoa. oh, both belts have the exact number of teeth. The belts are not the same teeth. Your axis will run crooked. So take some time to make sure the belts have the same length. I always put both belts with the teeth together and check that both belts are the same length. Note that this, note that in this way, the belts are slightly offset. So the bottom bottom, the right, and the right is really be offset. If you cut the belts at a later time, make sure you cut off the same number of teeth. Interesting, okay. Oh, no worries, no worries, G funny. It literally like, we haven't had bots in quite a bit and so, it's like they knew it. They were like, no, they're distracted. We'll, we'll get them now. See a little bit. Okay, belts. So the question I have about the belts is lengthwise, how much do we need? Do I just go ahead and cut it in half right now and try to make sure both are the exact same? Or do we... I feel like that's the move. Um, does chat get lasagna too? Absolutely. Absolutely chat gets lasagna. I, um, lasagna says it's gonna take 30 minutes to prep. Every time, every time uh, cooking instructions say like a prep time, I always double it. I'm like, I don't know who's making these, like what kind of wizards are making these recipes, but like, I, I can't, I can't handle a knife that fast. Um, Roughly route it on one side and use it as reference. Okay. So it looks like one, two. Okay, so looks like so you're saying roughly routed so and it's going to be using this guy this little belt tensioner thingamabob um so let's put the teeth in here this is going to go like that wait a minute oh wait, wait, what am i doing here Okay, so this needs to go over the top. Does it go un... What am I missing? Belt's going around over the top of here, like so. That makes sense to me. But then on the bottom side, 
Oh, I'm silly. Aren't there printed parts that we need to be adding? Yeah. <laughs> when do we install these? Are these, in, these get installed right now? I would imagine. Yeah, I think I might just cut them. Ah, no. We could install the bottom parts right now. I can't, right? I can't think of why these idlers couldn't go in. And it looks like uh, orientation. They don't mirror. I see here. Uh, where is an image of the bottom? Bottom, bottom, bottom. There's an image of the bottom. Okay, so open back goes towards it. Okay, so let's, let's get the bottom. That's what was throwing me off. I was like looking at it. I'm like, how is this? Where are you routing to? But yeah, I forgot we had these bottom pieces. Okay, so it looks like from the images I'm seeing here, the side that's open back will go up against the extrusion and the side that's closed will go downward towards the bottom. So we're just going to hopefully drop these in and have them be really nice to us. Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, also I should change camera because that's point so people can see ignore the dust <laughs> the v2 has seen uh v2 has seen a lot in its life it's a traveling traveling printer okay just making sure that all of the t-nuts are spinning as they should beautiful All right, those are in, those are spinning freely. And then other side. <clears throat> I also tightened some things before I shouldn't have in my, oh no. What'd you crack? I mean, hopefully you've got spare filament of whatever you printed the mod in. Um, okay, aligning T-nuts, aligning T-nuts. Just check it, lasagna. Of course, check it's lasagna. Perfect. Let's do the same thing. Just making sure that the top are aligned. Those are turning. Beautiful. Beautiful. No, this last one. It's always the last ones. Last one's being a jerk. Oh, come on, guy. All right, let's loosen this. Give it a little bit. There we go. All right, that one's like, it's mostly turned. We're going to let it slide. It's, it's clamping. I lied. I don't want, no, we've... We're not half-assing anything. This thing's, you're gonna turn. I'm gonna use a little, this little guy. Let's see. Let's loosen it a hair. There we go. All right. Okay, so now, now we route the belts. Uh, well, we all, that's why the 3.6 is kind of a bit thicker. Old crazy, I made the final call of this one. <laughs> okay, so top is in, and now it sounds like from the instructions I read that basically this guy is going to loop behind the bracket. It doesn't go in a channel, it just seems like it, it just sort of goes loose like that. Like so. Okay. Oh, oh, that's what happens when you don't tighten, you don't tighten things. Okay. Like so. And then 
This guy goes around the bearings. Pops out like that. Oops. Okay. Right? Come on, guy. There we go. Okay. And then this guy. Okay, so we're gonna cut you. Um I need I'm gonna grab scissors. I don't have any scissors in here. I don't want to use flush cutters for this because Especially if the teeth need to be exact. I'm not exactly, uh, not exactly the best at cutting straight with flush cutters. Get my scissors are in here. <clears throat> scissors. Where are you? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, they're supposed to be out here. I don't see them. Oh, hi there. So close. We are so close. Okay, and so just thinking that the current position we want it all right. So that would be all the way tense or all the way tightened. Um so we don't want it all the way, we want it a little bit shorter, so that way when we do this, I think that right about there. Okay, now we pull off and then we remove this. <clears throat> uh, keep a few centimeters left, you can shorten them further. Ooh. I uh, didn't, okay, I'll, let's hope for the best. <laughs> I measured it, what I, what I think is pretty accurately. Um, Okay, so if this guy is sticking up one, then... Holy crap, one sec. <laughs> I need to think here. Okay, so backside needs to be one tooth longer. Hope I didn't just skip a teeth. Okay. Okay, so right now, Backside, backside of this has one more tooth up since they're offset. So if I get to the bottom, they should be exact same size, but the one facing towards us, closest to us, should be one tooth longer. Dude, dude, one tooth longer. Oh, chef kisses, chef kisses all around. Oh, <laughs> I was not fully confident that uh, that I had that. I'm gonna be honest, I was not fully confident that that was gonna be, Whew, we did it. All right, so just take your time. And I mean, we could have corrected it. Um, I think I gave myself a centimeter or two. Um, so yeah, now we just do the thing, right? I mean, step one is to clamp um, does it say, after the bolts have been cut, let's, let's check this out really quick. Okay, you're almost there after the belts have been cut at the same length and routed. You need to fix, uh, you need to fix the place, start with a lower clamp. Once again, it's very important that it's identical on both plates. It is best to leave the belt protruding. Okay, so having it stick out one tooth on that. Uh, if you forget to insert the M3 nuts. So 
So what? Cut off the excess but again in the side. So it looks like, I mean, according to this, step one is insert it into the block here. Uh, oh, here we go. The clamp on the plate has a profile, <clears throat> uh, two M3 by 12s. Okay, let's do this. M3 12s are gonna be the longest ones, I'm almost positive. The bottom clamp is fixed, so there's excess that'll be cut from the part. Go around to the top. Okay. So let's drop this down. And if we want these to be the exact same length, then I'm going to do my absolute best Whoa. to just have this guy perfect like that. Okay. I need another hand. You guys can't see again. Oh my God. My brain is not. Okay. It will be cut from the part that wraps over the top. All right, bolt is here. Make sure I got the right size driver. Ah, sorry. <laughs> was not my intention. Okay. So, let's do this again. So this guy needs to go exactly into the correct pocket like that. Interesting. So, you guys won't be able to see this real well. Oh, there you go, belt drop. Okay, so I want to just make sure it's really awkward with the camera at this part, to be honest with you. Um, okay, that seems perfect. Okay, so I want this as tight as I can get it because we definitely don't want the belt to slip. And I think before we route it, let's just do the exact same thing the other side. So both sides are, both sides are at the same, same point here. Didn't want to disturb you. Uh, Kevin has absolutely no idea what to put. Yeah, it, it bugs me. I, I, I say every stream that I need to like play around to get the manual focus on this one. Um, it, it doesn't have an adjustable lens. It's like a, essentially a point and shoot, but it looks great. Um, it just, you know what, actually I can do this. It just makes it a little bit annoying, but there, now it's on manual focus. It's fine once I set it. Okay, grabbing the other belt piece, grabbing two of these guys. Yeah, sorry, alien. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's <laughs> so many things. <laughs> Aaron's like, how was the stream when I left? Alien yelled at me and Guffy, Guffy swore at me. <laughs> All right, if this is in the right spot, hopefully you guys can see that, but basically the, have it exactly lined up with the top. Um, I just don't want it to move at all. It's tricky, like, once you get that in to make sure that the belt hasn't moved. Um, there we go. Okay, I think we're good there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why isn't this side tightening? Oh, 
come on. Why? Tell me, tell me the nut didn't fall out while we were installing it. No. Don't, don't, my heart. All right, let's see. Interesting, I can't see. I don't know that it fell out, but I've got a bad feeling. Okay, that's definitely not gripping on anything. Yeah, there's nothing there. No way. No way, when did that have happened? Oh. Are we screwed or are we screwed? I don't know how we could get one on there without removing it again. <sighs> yeah, definitely one in there. Let me see if I get a longer screw. Um, hold on, I doubt it. I, I have a feeling it fell out, which breaks my heart. <clears throat> they were really tight. Yeah, there's no way there's anything in there. there. I don't see how there could possibly be anything. It's in there. It's in there. It was just too deep into the pocket. Yes. <laughs> it has to be in there. This thing's tight now. Well, unless, wait, unless, hold on. Hold on y'all. <laughs> hold on. I'm not, I'm not convinced. I, I'm, wait up. They might've butt against the aluminum extrusion. No, I'm wrong. I lied. All right. So we're screwed right now. <laughs> Uh, what is the, what is our option? Taking everything off the top is not ideal. I, I don't know. Oh, read my message. Okay. Lay the printer on the back and use a pair of tweezers to get them in place. We can try it. We can definitely try it. Heat inserts is interesting. Um, too funny. That That is, I have plenty of heat inserts. Um, and that would probably work. Oof. Okay, so we need to lay it. Oh, there's the nut. I heard it. There it is. All right, we're just gonna go big cam here. It's, I, this isn't. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a heat insert version of testing. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try it. Yeah, here's the stupid nut. Uh, tweezers I've got right here. It's always like that. It's the last, always the last thing. The last nut, the last. Um, let's see, can I move this? Let's move this this way. I would love to have a really bright light shining. You're okay, Bubba. Look, he's crying, he wants his mama. I wonder, like, if I could get the tweezer to align it, like maybe not get it into the pocket, but just enough so that I can get an M3 screw in and then kind of pull it in. I just can't see very well.
I can't see, period, if it's lined up or not. Wait, 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 I can see. All right. Everyone, all of the positive 3D printing vibes, please. I think this is, I think this is feasible. I, I think we can do this. Maybe. It would be so much nicer if I could see through this hole. I just can't. So it. Okay, so, oh no, I don't think I, <laughs> man, I am so bummed about this. I know, you're right, there was a note. There it goes again. So I did have it. Okay. Oh, it saddens me. Okay. So let's see. We did it once right now. So I think that Put if I use the hole. Put a smaller key inside the hole. What do you mean? <laughs> Thank you, Nice. I appreciate the donation. Use those locking tweezers I sent you tweezers uh, these guys the ones that close kind of cl I don't know oh, these probably do have enough clearance I think you actually sent a couple pairs. Okay, so game plan, new game plan. I was able to thread it in, but this time we're gonna try to thread it in on the actual printed part. So that way, once I get it in, I don't need to take it out and then have it drop again like I just did. We'll basically get one half in, into the nut, and then, yeah. That's it. Interesting. For some reason, with this smaller sphere, I can't feel. I can't feel it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it about I don't know five more minutes, and then I am um then I'm probably gonna pull the plate. Cause the only way to do it, yeah, I think we pull the plate. I think we gotta pull the plate. Oh. Ooh, that was a much smoother, smoother drop. All right, y'all.
uh, have to stand up in five hours. Ooh, jeez. All right, nice. Have a great night. Thanks for hanging out, man. Okay, yeah, we're, we're gonna do this. It shouldn't take us all that long. Do I need to take all them? I wonder if I can just... Yeah, I don't want to crack it. We'll take them all. Okay. <laughs> Why didn't we just do this from the beginning? <laughs> this is much easier. Just take this off really quick. Like that. Hopefully we don't drop everything because that will make me sad as well. There you are, you pocket. <laughs> Dude, it's such a tight fit. I don't understand why it came out. Oh no, my, my music's dying. Okay. I don't have, the glue I have is so runny. I think we're good. I think <laughs> we're gonna just do it. The glue I have is so runny, I don't want to get it all over the printed parts. And the other glue I have is in the garage. I threaded it in at least, so it shouldn't be able to... If the other one pops out, then someone's trolling me. <laughs> this printer's trolling me. But I, I believe. I think we'll be fine. No big deal. No big deal. Perfect. Perfect. That was easy. <laughs> we did surgery. We did surgery when we could have just done that. Okay. Back to where we were, everybody. Fix the belt and the clamp and put the plate on. Be right back, going to grab a monster. Oh, got a monster, sounds so good, dude. Okay, belt's on the ground where I left it when I freaked out. M3 by 12. All right. Woo! Okay, yeah, a piece of tape wouldn't have been a bad idea, actually. Uh, sick. Uh, it says, okay, so let's just route, route these up through the bottom of the bearings. Let's see, let's make sure we don't have any crap in the way. <clears throat> Did I goof by going from this side? There we go. I guess I am working against gravity now by going 
and bottom up, but gravity's been the theme of the stream. <laughs> Yes. So magical watching it come together finally. Ooh, that's really bright for y'all. There you go. All right. Okay, my measurements were good. We should have hopefully enough to get into these pockets. Uh, you can still put them in the other side in place. That way. Aaron, did you say we need a trash bag of some sort? <laughs> no, I ordered I ordered trash bags for uh, for the yard. <laughs> we need Ziploc bags, you said, because I took all of them. <laughs> if you didn't get Ziploc bags, get Ziploc bags. I, I've been taking them for all the printer projects, so we have <laughs> we have no Ziploc bags. <laughs> Okay, so this is going into here. Let me... Like so, like, let's see. Okay, and we want them the same size and it looks like it says have one sticking out the end like that. Oh, beautiful, dude. Beautiful. Okay, so that one's not tight, but let's just see. Uh, Ziplocs are on the list. Perfect. I'm going to start using tubs instead of Ziplocs. I feel bad taking all the Ziplocs, but yeah, I've used a ton lately for all the printer projects. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so it looks like that's all we're doing right now. Um, so let me route the other side. <clears throat> what an adventure today has been. This was a fun, <clears throat> like return to FDM land after being, doing resin stuff and then laser stuff. Oh no, what did you do? Why are we twisted? Come on, man. There we go. Let's make sure we're centered on the bearings. Cool. Going over the top, bringing it back down. Like that. And one more of these spacers. Like so. There we go. And we're in. I hope I did them the same length. Why does why does one side feel? Yeah, I think yeah, that feels good. All right. Cool. So belts are routed. Uh, they're not tight. They're all just loose right now. Let's go to here. <laughs> I don't dude, I don't even think about uh what I'm like I'm sort of like I sort of just say what I'm doing like narrating what I'm doing without a whole lot of thought so there's times I've said things to him like ooh that sounds a little promiscuous okay mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. I use an app on my phone. The two belts will always sound different. That's normal. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Insert M3 by 25s, which are these guys. <clears throat> okay. 
I'm about to download the app. Um, okay, that's in. <laughs> Damn it, Alien. Now I can't not think of it. All right, let's do the same over here. Well, it looks like those um, those nuts that we had to mallet in earlier did get aligned, which is nice. So cool. All right. <clears throat> okay. Into the tension, make sure the M3 nut is in the tensioner housing. Insert the block into the guide of the tensioner block along with the screw. Make sure that the screw comes down to the nut. Now turn the screw counterclockwise as if you want to unscrew it. Push the screw down and turn it very slowly. At this point, the screws jumped over to start. Whoa. Turn the screw counterclockwise as if you want to unscrew it. Push the screw down, turn it very slowly. You should hear a soft click. At this point, the screw has jumped over the start of the nut thread. As soon as you hear the click, turn the screw exactly two turns counterclockwise. Ooh, wow. Okay. Jeez. Um. So part of my, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, one, two, okay. Ow, shit, ow, what's on the floor? <laughs> oh, the power plug. Okay, so, very, very specific. So, you're unscrewing it while pushing downwards, so you can hear that, like, click, right? You can feel it, like, there it is. And so, let me do it one more time. Click, and I did one, I am sure that it is not 100% perfect. Uh, I, that is about, I think, the best starting point I'm going to get right now. Um, as soon as you hear the click, turn the screw exactly two turns. Note the position of your Allen key at the click so you know how the Allen key must be positioned again. So I, since I'm using a like hand driver, it didn't exactly work. There's no real tension on the belt, but the screw is inserted equally. Left side slash side with the X motor and the extruder motor. Now it's time for a little math. For all the following steps, use the left side. Dad. Um. Okay. Uh, a little math. For all the following steps, use the left side, so the side of the motor, as a reference because it is damped from sound. It is best to use the long part of the belt on the inside. It is best. Uh, it is best to use the long part of the belt on the inside between the plates and Z profile. If you have trouble, okay, between the plates and Z profile. Gotcha. Uh, if you have trouble to pluck it, it shouldn't touch the plates and the Z profile. Um, you can also use the outer upper belt. That is already announced. The belt is now. Oh uh, man. <clears throat> I can also use that one. For the second case, your Z and X axis should be as far down as possible. Preferably in the foaming position. Just like the nozzle still on the bed. Axis cannot move yet. Some reason not possible. That is already announced. The belt is now just to be a sound fucking. Yeah, uh, all right, music's dead, so I have no music now. Uh, left side, I'm just trying to like visual, <laughs> I think that at this point my brain's like, what? Okay, left side with the instrument, we're now starting for the math, but following steps use a left as a reference. So, the one thing I'm a little bit, hey, if measuring from the inside belt, you should, you would use 66 hertz. If you use the outer belt, the value will be different. Measure the length of the belt and use the formula above. Hertz equal. 
I am, why am I'm not understanding? Okay, so let's use, let's try first download the app. That's the first step, Pano Tuner. <clears throat> Pano Tuner. Yeah, I get the app part. Uh, Pano Tuner, Pano Tuner. Okay, it's a free version and a paid. We'll go with the free for now. I think the thing I'm not understanding is, like, every time I tight, every time I tighten this, like, a turn, am I supposed to rinse and repeat that for the other side? That's what it seems like. Uh, okay, open. Panel to do I would like to access your microphone. Should I be shutting off? Okay, so. Okay, so I think I get it. Basically, my voice, I need to shut up because it's messing with it. But it seems like, so the Hertz is down there. It's saying for this, we want it to be at, uh, where are you? 66 Hertz. So every time I pluck this, which right now it's obviously gonna be too loose, but that's 60 Hertz. So we're gonna just keep tightening it. Okay. So I'm gonna talk for a second. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say like, uh, like that says 49, but there's no way, like, I mean, clearly there needs to be more tension. So I should be able to just keep doing what I'm doing until I start to feel like it's got a bit of tension and then start doing this, so. So I also, you don't, so it's saying <laughs> the belt length change with the position of the X axis, obviously. Thievish. Oh, outer belts, the one I'm supposed to be using, this one? If measuring from the inside belt. No, out, it's supposed to be the inside belt, right? This guy against the aluminum. Oh, gotcha. Okay.
Ooh, it's getting there. We're getting so close. I just want to check the other side for fun. I know it's going to be slightly different. Yeah, so the other side shows a much higher number. All right, so our goal is 66 hertz for this machine, according to the guide. Check this out. So the hertz number is right here. Let's see. Can you see that? I feel like that's pretty dang good. Between 65.7 and 66.2. Sweet. And again, the other side, like you said, it's different because of the fact that it doesn't have the motor. It's gonna sound different. So the other side, although I tightened it as much as I could to the exact, And the other side's showing like 164, so it's not even close. But if I feel the tension, they feel like damn close. I mean, awesome. So, um, it's not like I think that the level of instruction on that part makes it more confusing than it is. It's not very confusing. Like you know, strong, grab inside. Do you do the same to the right, you do the left down to the T as far as turns go, and then get, it's just, I think it was the paragraph of text and like, it made it seem more complicated, but it really wasn't. Okay. Sweet. That was, that was really fun. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed that. Okay. No music, which is okay. Mm -mm. Tighten all the grub screws, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Moving the axis up and down aligns the 20T on the rod. When the axis moved all the way up, both plates should be at the same height or hit the frame the same on both sides. The axis may not be able to move all the way up. So make sure the distance is still the same. The distance is the same and the belts in both 20T are about centered. You can tighten the grub screws. Make sure the belts do not make contact with the top part. If your axis is not the same height. All right, so <laughs> everyone say a quick little 3D printer pair, please. That our sides are the same so we can, we can tighten this up here. It looks, that one's basically touching. That one's base, I, I think that that's, yeah, we're good. That's beautiful. Okay, and then on the I think that's good. The belts are towards the outside. Should I be slightly shifting these to like or just kind of let it go where it naturally falls? I think I want it like that. Oh, yep. Okay, push some more if needed. Gotcha. Yeah, it looks like I just wanted a hair. I'd like to have it centered if possible. Although it doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to do. It's shifting. It wants to shift to the left. Think that we're okay. Mm. 
belt center of channel. That looks centered. Well, it looks like it's going to be riding on the side, so hopefully that's okay. Uh, that's not too bad. It doesn't look like it's like really riding against it. I see a hair gap, so I think we'll be okay. Okay, that looks good. All right, dropping down. <clears throat> okay, so tighten that, tighten that. Uh, let's see. The last step is to tighten the grub screw on the ADT pulley and motor alignment. Align the ADT pulley so there is a small gap between the transmission body and the gear. Okay. Wait, where do I, when do I, um, I don't think, did we ever tighten or align the um, idler on this motor? I thought it said to just kind of place it through and we would set it up later. Yeah, it looks like it needs to go further out. Did I goof or is there an access, a way to access it? Um, let's see. So I see that portion, but I don't see any mention of Oh, here we go. Here we go. This one goes through for the 16 fully. Okay, how do I access it though? So it looks like we've got the gap that we want. What I'm confused about though is how do I access, how do I get into there? I guess it needs to come out more, but. Oh, grub screw is not loose. I thought it said to, wait. Yeah, grub screw is not loose. So if you're saying grub screw is supposed to be loose. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I thought the instructions said earlier to put it on there and tighten it, but don't worry about alignment. We're gonna, we're like, uh, okay, so can I get this in there without stripping everything? Hmm. I think I can. So I think, I think what I'm gonna do is, is pop this guy out and see if I can get in Shit. Uh, 
They don't look tight. I am confused. So I guess the answer then is what? Loosen, loosen these guys again. Loosen, loosen. Okay, so now I should, oh shit, the tension. Um, if I loosen this, I might be able to shove this driver through the M5 nut. <clears throat> I'm gonna try it. It looks like there might be space to go through the M5 nut and then reach it. Uh, yeah. Yep, we're through the M5 nut. Dude. We're so close. So freaking close. Um, can I remove the M5 nut for a sec here? No. This is a real bummer. the belt loose enough to come off so I can get a little bit more slack. Okay, cool. Okay, I think I can do it like this. There's a little bit more of a window here. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh my God. All right, now it's loose. I, I, was, I don't remember tightening it. Okay. All right, let's get you, oh shit, how do we do this now? Get you back on here, pull you back up, put you back around here. We are doing the thing. All right, let's tighten these guys back up. I'll have to look back at the instruction. I, I think I must have misinterpreted what it said. It's just thinking about like, don't like, don't worry about, I don't know, maybe I just read it wrong. I swore it said to like install it, but maybe, I don't know. I think I've probably misinterpreted that part. Well, at least we know that you can take that off, um, you know, that part off and get there. Okay, so now it says insert this into here. How much of a gap do we want? Uh, motor, motor is loose. Motor's loose. Wait, what did I do wrong? I will check that part, sorry. Uh, sorry, I can't see, I couldn't see chat from while I was at. Everything's good though, right? We're good to move forward now? Wasn't ignoring, just couldn't see. Um, align it so there's a small gap between the transmission does it matter how big or small the gap is? Doesn't seem like it. We'll just do, I think that seems probably fine. I can't, I need a flashlight. I can't see. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> uh, you're good now. Cool. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ignoring. I <laughs> from the other side, I just can't see anything um, as far as chat goes. Okay, so we did that, and the last thing is about loosen the grub screw from the 16T pulley and all around the gear. Uh, turn the M. Wait, wait. Let's 
Six points out. So loosen. Turn the M5 screw in the tension knob. Okay, so I should probably install the tension knob again. I'm not supposed to, it still hasn't said anything about tightening the, until the belt has a slight tension. Okay. No tension yet. Okay, well, slight tension. Um, the belt should only have a very slight tension, not like the long belt. The tension is only to prevent the belt from slipping over teeth. The motor should not be connected to the main board yet. If you've already plugged in the cable, pull it. Otherwise, the motor will cause reverse current flow. Ooh, I've done that recently. Move the axis up and down a few times. The 16T should now rotate on the motor shaft. If the motor turns. Okay, gotcha. We're just aligning it. Does that seem like enough tension? It feels probably. Let me do like another hair turn, maybe. Feels like this needs to go further out. Like I know I'm gonna let it do its thing still, but. Is that gonna be a problem that it's rubbing against the outer? Maybe the gap needs to be wider right here. It's definitely riding up against this, but maybe that's not an issue since it's all rotating together, right? I wonder if it needs a slightly bigger gap. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a slightly bigger gap. Looks good to me, AT has a slight wiggle, but that will be gone soon. You don't think it needs a little bit more of a gap to sort of center the belt? I do see that slight wiggle you're talking about. All right, if you say it's good, we're rocking it. Uh, the bigger the gap, the further you have to move the motor pulley out. Yeah. Well, we'll do it like this. I feel, wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold on. What's up, monkey? Wait, why is this supposed to be loose still? No. Okay, uh, 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 no the axis is just loose and soft in the belt, it should center itself, it does not interfere, crack noise, you have over-tensioned it, loosen the M5, once the pulley failed, tighten the grub screws, sick. Oops, I feel like it moved itself a little bit there. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, we can access it. Just make sure the ADT isn't running against the transmission body. No, it's definitely not. There's, there's, I would say like a three millimeter gap, give or take. Okay. Um, so we did that. Uh, your access is not the same on both sides. That's fine. Now we're good on that. Okay, the last thing to do is wiring. The picture shows the order of the cables as they have to be for the original main board and the original motor with a link. Um, okay, the last thing to do is wiring. The picture shows the order of the cables. So 
Uh, where is it? Okay, order of cables. Although there's no colors. Um, did we tighten the, oh no, no, we didn't tighten, we did not tighten the motor M3s. I completely missed that. So these two, right? Now that it's tensioned in place. Good call. All right. And the ADT, you know, the ADT definitely tightened. Uh, when I when I spaced it, I did tighten it. You couldn't see that, or maybe you couldn't see that. That was when you guys thought I was ignoring you. <laughs> okay, uh, last is one. I'm pretty sure it's just a cable. What are the cables as they have to be for the original main board? We are rocking the original main board and the original motor, which we're also rocking. However, cables, motors, and main boards are not all the same for all of us, and your motor may not move correctly, not at all in the wrong direction. Correct and safe way should be to find a pinout diagram for your main board and motor and arrangement accordingly, since there are many differences. I will not show diagrams here. It's 1.30 a.m. <laughs> You're a legend, Kevin. Uh, I did get the motor extension cable. I did, I did get it. Oops, I dropped an extra part. Honestly, I, I just wanna see this thing like I just want to see it home itself. If it homes itself, I'm happy. Oh, what, why did I get? So I've got a Y. Okay, so this has an end stop and a cable. Um, I'm thinking we just send it. <laughs> We've got a full cart, nice. Yeah, I'm thinking we kind of just full send it and plug it in and see what happens. So everyone good on that? Like <laughs> I'm running, I'm rocking the original, original board, um, original motor. <clears throat> I feel like we should just full send it. Um, the one thing I do need to do though, is that I flashed Clipper on this. I haven't actually printed with it since it got Clipper flashed on it. Um, but I need to plug this in. Um, a little CB1. Hoping that the uh, hoping that the printer gods will <laughs> shine down on us. Okay, so this is booting up. Um, this is what a micro micro USB. Do I fucking call it a micro? Where did I put you at? Yes, micro USB. Plug into here. Plug into here. <clears throat> Uh, power cable goes into here. Fingers crossed, everybody. <laughs> oh my god, fingers crossed, I don't die. Um, at least not from this. All right, plugging in. How come this is not flashing yet? It's still booting. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I will, I will be ready to help when you get home. Okay. Okay. Now we're flashing. So we should be on the network. Cherry Coke for today. Yes. We kind of uh, go back and forth between Cherry Coke and, and Dr. Pepper. 
One second, let me grab the IP really quick. Uh, let me also power this on. Wait, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, um, I didn't install the belt back, guys. Mm. This needs to go around. One second. When I rotated the Z axis earlier, it popped out. We never, I never, I won't blame you guys. Never popped it back in. Okay, that looks good. Let's loosen the tension on this so I can get it back into the belt. There we go. Let's tighten it up. All right. <laughs> no more belts for this printer. Okay, let's see. I don't remember what the IP is. Where are we? CB1. Um, devices, client list. Sorry, if there's been any notifications, I apologize. I, I uh, Since my headset is dead, I, I can't hear anything like any notifications, which sucks. Oh crap, I need to... <laughs> ah! Clipper config directory, I really quick. I was screwing around all this thing so much, I must have reflashed it. Um, I just need to grab the Ender 3v2 config. Uh... All right. We're gonna steal this just for right now. Go to file, raw. Oops. Control A, Control C. Pinter.cfg. Okay, so yeah, we don't have anything in here and that's why it's freaking out. There we go, save and restart. Oh, please work. Yes. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. The moment of truth. Did I or did I not screw something up? And did uh, this motor extension cable swap our pin, our pin directions? All right. Are we ready? Everybody, fingers crossed. All right. Three, two, one. going up. It's going up. All right, emergency stop. Okay. So that seems fine. Uh, we just need to firmware restart and uh, swap the direction. Trash it. <laughs> yeah, this mod doesn't work. <laughs> All right, printer config. Uh, so we are going, oops. Stepper X, stepper Y, stepper Z, direction pin, invert, no, save and restart. All right, let's try this again. Oops. There it goes, there it goes, it's beautiful, look at it. Look at it, look at it, look at it go. Look at it moving, it's so cool. It ended up top right there. It looks so freaking sweet. <laughs> I probably will have to increase my homing speeds a bit. It's a little anticlimactic. Oh. This is super exciting. It all like, seeing it, it's always like this with any build or mod that I do, where it's like sometimes during the process, I'm like, man, when you get towards the end and you see it do the thing and it's all worth it. I'm so excited. I, I need to do all like this uh, E-step calibration for this since I'm running the stop, uh, stop, stock, yes, config. Uh, I might add, no, I'm not gonna add a BL touch because I'm gonna wait for, uh, I'm gonna wait for Kevin to show me the V2 or uh, the new version of the uh, clack, ender clack, the clack, I don't know what it's called. Um, 
Yeah, today was awesome. What? Okay, so it's it took us roughly, holy crap, four hours and 42 minutes. Definitely a longer stream than I had initially planned. I would say um, if it, this, this um, probably added at least an hour to it, the having to take everything apart, I would say at least an hour because of the fact that I went with the Ender 3v2. And then I think that the surgery... Uh, performing surgery and then having to take that part off was like another 20 minutes but this yeah this was definitely longer than normal but tons of fun we haven't done anything FDM related in like three or four weeks so this was super exciting um, major thank you I definitely think again Kevin Clack Ender uh, Kevin definitely deserves like a massive round of applause this is a very, very cool, well thought out mod. I mean, there's just a lot to it from the design to execution to all of it. Um, and the exception of the tight, uh, getting those couple nuts in that were really tight and the um, the bearings down here, uh, which I think is again, just because I went with ABS. And so that shrinkage factor took into, um, probably, probably didn't do me any favors. Like it was, it was pretty seamless. All the stuff that was a little bit more complicated was just because of the printer and the execution and the instructions on here, I mean, are like seriously, like a second to none. This is absolutely incredible. So um, massive thank you to Kevin for one, creating this mod, two, doing an absolutely awesome job with documentation and hanging out to help out as well with uh, his entire community that came and hung out and cracked jokes and help me out. So uh, if anybody watching this now or later is interested, links are in the description to the GitHub, to the um, Discord server, and I'm going to be adding this website. I, it wasn't public facing really until today, and so when I scheduled it yesterday, I didn't have it. Um, and here's a tip page. I will also put that in the description as well then, so that way it's down there. But yeah, massive thank you to everyone. It was a ton of fun. I'm stoked it's done. All that we need now on this is like that uh, ender clack. I can't even, you just said it, the ender clacker, <laughs> it's called. <laughs> um, and, and this thing's gonna be an absolute beast with Clipper on it. So I'm I'm pumped. But on that note, I definitely am going to end the stream and kick back when Aaron gets home after I help with groceries and then I'm going to be making lasagna. So um, next Wednesday um, for anybody, I don't wanna bring it in here because I didn't take the label off of it. Uh, next Wednesday stream, we are starting a new printer build. We are going to be print, uh, printing the uh, second, it's the Cube. It's a Core XY, mostly machine framed printer with a internal heater, which looks absolutely insane. So that'll probably be quite a few streams and I'm really excited for that. But this was a ton of fun and it's something I've wanted to do for a really long time. So um, I hope everybody just has an absolutely amazing rest of your day and I will see you guys all next time. Again, thank, thanks to everyone for lurking, for the laughs, for, for all the above. Um, it, was, it was just an absolute blast. So I hope you get a good night's sleep, Kevin. Night, everybody. I'll see you guys next time.